So far in Live Golf, Royal Greens in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has been the sole domain of Brooks Kepka. But while the reigning PGA champion still harbors hopes of a three-peat, we could be crowning a new champion in 2024. A red-hot Waco Neiman leads the way, but a hungry chasing pack includes the Masters champion John Rahm and former Open champion Louis Oosthuizen. It's Championship Sunday at Live Golf Jeddah. The podium awaits our individual and team victors, and the action starts right now. Live Golf's 2024 season has begun. And with it comes an unrelenting pace and grind. Oh, oh my man. goodness. The most competitive field in the game is back. Golf's Global League races to the finish in Saudi Arabia, where the greatest show in golf continues. Count it. Oh, absolutely sensational. New stars are emerging. Known champions are delivering. What a time to produce. He is the main man in the Live Golf League. Another championship Sunday awaits. He's in the box seat. Marco Neiman is simply in the form of his life. The Chilean won our opening event of the season in Mexico and has a two-stroke lead with 18 holes to play to make it two wins out of three. The next nine players are separated by just three shots, including John Rahm, Louis Oosthuizen, and Jason Kokrak. Louis' South African stingers have a grip on the team title, but with all four scores counting on Championship Sunday, it could all change in the blink of an eye. Hello everybody from Arlo White, from Jerry Foltz and from David Fairty. Welcome live inside the Live Golf Broadcast Studio, wherever you're watching around the world and across the United States on the CW. Welcome to Championship Sunday. Staggered shotgun start today, so our lead three will go off in around about 10 minutes time. The other 51 players very shortly. And this, Jerry, is familiar territory for Waco Neiman. He had a four-stroke lead overnight going into the final round in Mexico. He was penalized two yeah. shots so it was only a two shot lead as he has today there are a few wobbles along the way but he got it done in a playoff there are you confident that he can do it again today yeah absolutely and I was asked earlier what does he who does he have to look out for who who's he have to be concerned with he only has to be concerned with himself if he goes out and shoots 400 day it's likely over five or six it is over and that's all he's got to do given the way he played the first two days that should be not a big ask but in the same token, he has proven in the past that he does have some human blood in that body and has struggled a little bit. 71, 72 out of him today, and he brings a lot of players back into it. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe all the way down to Phil Mickelson, yeah. who's uh, six back. You know, there are about 12 players, I think, have a chance if he doesn't get off to a great start. And I think, you know, that's the key for Waco Neiman. We saw him in Mexico. He was shaky at the beginning, you know, and he did, really didn't find that extra gear un until he found himself behind. So, you know, he's a front runner. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how he front runs today. You just saw Phil Mickelson. His high flyers are on the fringes of a podium finish for what would be the first time since 2022. They're two strokes back at the moment. So a big day for him individually and potentially for his team. John Rahm, let it slip a little bit. Did he in round two after his opening round of 62 and he missed that really short putt didn't he uh, for to end his round with a birdie yesterday yeah yeah it was it was uncharacteristic out of john he just didn't quite have it but it didn't look like his game was in bad shape it just didn't work out score wise uh, but expect him to make the move today of course he's one of the best players if not the best player on the face of the earth it is our shotgun start on championship sunday event three of 2024 this is Live Golf Jeddah who will take the titles today. Lucas Herbert is going to tee it off momentarily. 
Thank of you. Ripper GC. You saw a shot there as well in our quad box of Louis Oosthuizen, who so far is bogey-free all week and 10 under par, but a 65 and then a 66 for Lucas yesterday. He teed off at four. He played the back nine holes at Royal Greens in just 31, and he's got himself into contention. A little bit of uncharted waters for this young man. One win on his previous life on the PGA Tour, but that was an event in Bermuda that didn't have quite the names in it that this field does, and that's well right. New to live golf himself as a replacement for Jed Morgan, who was relegated. And here he is, Phil Mickelson. Seven under par, and he tees it off at three. And you know, Phil obviously has got nothing to prove. One of the, the, the greats of the game in history, but he always feels like he's got something to prove especially, you know, with his advancing years, you know, that he can still do this. He will have more than half an eye, I think, or a hairy eyeball, as you say. Yes. David, on the team competition today as well, the high flyers haven't performed so far this season, albeit only after two events, but a real chance of getting on the podium today. That was a heck of an opening shot right there out of Phil on that part. Yeah, yeah. Goodness gracious. Well, an opening day 62 for John Rahm, eight under par, but a 69 yesterday, and he'll have been kicking himself after missing that short birdie put at 18. He let the world know about it as well. <laughs> Rahm teeing off at two. Lining up wide open, keep an eye on those shoulders. If they match the sh foot line comfortably, he normally hits that that controlled fade that starts on the initial line that he wants. Sometimes those shoulders get a little too square. Careful. Here's Louis on the tee at one. Stinger, look at that, bottom left of your screen. They bring a seven stroke lead into the final day here. But all four scores count on Championship Sunday. It could all change very quickly. Championship Sunday is underway in Jeddah. Our league group of this man, Wako Neiman, Schwartzel and Kokrak will tee off next. He's had a fantastic run of results, hasn't he, Wako Neiman? Before Christmas, went down down under Aussie PGA, finished fifth. Following week, he was a first place finish in the Aussie Open, and that earned him entry into the Open Championship this year. A tied fourth at the Dubai Desert Classic. Then he arrived in Mexico and took out the title, the first live golf event of the season. He was third in Oman in the International Series last week. His teammate, Vitorque Carlos Ortiz, won the title. Where will he finish? here at Live Golf Jeddah. The next few hours will determine that. And he's also had an invite to the Masters as well. So he's in two of the four majors. And his form is hard to ignore. Yeah, the, there will be uh, there will be a lot of people throwing his name into the conversation in the lead up to the Masters at Augusta National. He has the type of game uh, from a tee to green standpoint that can actually be expected to play well there. He's very comfortable now hitting the ball at different trajectories, whereas as, yeah. as little as a year ago, he wasn't. Yeah, he said that yesterday and he's driving the ball forever. Yeah. And if you look at him, you know, he doesn't look so strong. He's not all that big, but he's like a piece of twisted steel. He's got that tensile strength and flexibility. So there's Wako Neiman on the putting green, just going through his.
final drills before our final three players will tee it off here on Championship Sunday. There's a tingle of excitement because just when you think you know what's going to happen on Championship Sunday, the yeah. whole thing just gets turned on its head. And even a, a seven-stroke lead for Stinger in the team competition, with four scores counting, that can disappear very quickly indeed. But for Stinger, that's been quite a comeback after a pretty poor performance in Las Vegas. It's an amazing comeback, it really is. But like you say, you, you, in the team contest in particular with four scores to count you know we, we've been trapped in a situation where quite often we thought we've got the answer and then someone changes the question yeah, <laughs> yeah well that yeah. smash started that final round in vegas uh, three shots behind two separate teams they went on to win by seven mm. ten shot difference right there anybody within i'd say 11 or 12 has a has a chance a long Absolutely. shot chance as a team to get it done today. Smash with 10 under on Championship Saturday, Vegas. The rest of the field, 66 over. A few highlights here of Waco's second round. He went round in 63 on day one. It was a very solid 64 yesterday. A round, or particularly starts, that contrasted. He was six under after nine on day one. He parred his opening six yesterday, then came good. This is his second shot into the 10th, and that helped to set up this Two-stroke lead over Charles Schwartzel, but Louis, who stays at his three-back, the captain of Team Stinger. This is Louis's second shot into seven. Former Open champion, he's finished runner-up in all four majors. And I've said that Waco Neiman is in great form. Louis's in fantastic form as well. He came second in Oman last week. Could it be Louis's day to take out his first Live Golf title? Well, you know, he's proven himself as a, if he gets his nose in front, he can be very hard to beat. He won an open championship by seven or eight shots, you know, um, and uh, such a nobody makes the game look prettier. I say it all the time than Louis Oosthuis, and he just swings the club so quietly and uh, and so beautifully, technically perfect. Right. Technically perfect and, and aesthetically perfect as mm -hmm. well. Um, by all accounts, he's extremely healthy. I remember it was in 2022, yes. early last year, 2023. He was really battling some issues with the elbows and the, and the forearms where literally he felt like he might be one swing away from snapping a tendon and his career being over certainly a long time. Um, he's healthy. He's the kind of player that could go out and, and do something special today and, and make continue to make his mark in the game. And he's healthy enough to shave as yeah. well which is yeah. a really good yeah, sign. Yeah. John Rahm is nine under par, but perhaps a little disappointed with that after an opening round 62. That was his birdie at 15 yesterday. And John Rahm is ready at the second hole, his first hole for his approach. Oh, that hole down in the lower level there, David, just looks like it's screaming, come and get me. Yeah. Wow, he caught that one thick. It's not something you see very often. Well, let's head out onto the course and speak to our analysts and find out what to watch for. Don Belay in a moment, but Sue Ann first. Sue Ann, what are you looking forward to today? Well, John Rahm has contended in every single event since he's joined Liv. The one thing that can stand between him and the trophy today would be his approach shots outside of 150. He's 46th in strokes gained to the field in that metric. I spoke to his caddy, Adam Hayes, and he said if John misses the fairway, it is a bit more challenging for him to get control over the golf ball, uh, especially with grass behind it because of his angle of attack. He's a more shallow through the ball angle of attack attack. So if he hits fairways today, that could be the key to his success. Waco Neiman has only hit 11 out of 18 fairways, but he's third in strokes gained off the tee. So he's not driving it into unplayable areas. He's the best iron player this week. He's the third best putter. You put that all together with a two shot lead and the confidence he's got, he's going to be a really tough man to beat. Dom Suan, thank you very much indeed. Lots more to come from those two as the day unfolds. Louis Oosthuizen, his second at one. Downwind out of the rough. Gets that to take a nice little seat as well. Louis's teammate Brandon Grace has rediscovered his form here in Saudi Arabia. He's eight under par. He eagled his first hole yesterday to get Stinger off to a fantastic start. That's his uh, birdie putt at three. Now let's uh, get...
get you back caught up with John Rahm. Simple up and down, that's what you would expect. But uh, you would have been expecting a putt like that for Birdie. Lucas Herbert. Yep. Yuck. Needed to give it a little more. Phil, to start with Birdie. This will be a big moment at three. Yes. Oh, look at that. The new putter is purring for Phil Mickelson, and he gains a stroke on Wako Neiman immediately to go to eight under par. A banter for Birdie at one went round in a scintillating 63 yesterday, including six consecutive birdies. He's in contention on the course where he won the Saudi International last January. So, uh, lead group, the final three players to tee off in our staggered Championship Sunday shotgun start. And Jason Kokrak will tee it off first. 68, a solid 68 on the opening day, but then a quite brilliant 62 yesterday. Had he birded his final two holes, it would have been a 59, but he's a player in decent form. Tied for fifth in Las Vegas. In fact, it was he and Anser, the two lowest scorers of the day, who played together yesterday, a combined 15 under. And Jason said, well, we just fed off each other all day as the birdies flowed. And he also gave credit to Abe's caddy, Benji Thompson, saying after they made a couple birdie putts, just, you know, comfortably saying in his southern draw, let's fill her up today, boys. Ustazen for birdie a moment ago. Nine feet away and money. Usti's off to a flyer. The South African gets it to 11 under par, level with another South African. His teammate, Charles Schwartzel. It is fantastic to see our inaugural winner back to form. He finished seventh overall in our first season, which contained eight tournaments, but he slipped to 38th on the points list in the first season of the Live Golf League. And here he is challenging once again in Saudi Arabia. And a three wood yesterday, but different strategy today. A driver, but it's off a little to the left. And now on the team, please welcome the so captain here we of go. 4KGC, A man Joaquin in simply Neiman. magnificent form. He regarded yesterday's 64, six under par, as way better than yesterday when he got it at seven under 63. Only one bogey so far this week. Our winner, after four playoff holes in virtual darkness in the opening event in Mexico, he's in the box seat by two shots, and he is underway on Championship Sunday. And a very good one. Could be quite close to the green. Marco seeking a third win in his last six worldwide starts. Aussie Open, Maya Koba, will he add Jeddah? A few moments ago, at two, Kevin Nah for birdie. And now we are live with John Rahm for par on two. Stinger's lead already stretched to eight shots from the overnight seven. Well, with a little I caught up with his caddy, Adam, earlier, and he said, you know, he just left a few putts out there yesterday. We saw a few short ones, just got up and out of it. So he's trying to stay a little bit with and through the putt. Yeah, with a wedge in your hand to a favorable hole location, he wasn't expecting this for par. No problem. Solid start for John Rahm. 
Only he and Dustin Johnson have managed top 10 finishes in both of our events so far in 2024 in Mayakoba and in Las Vegas. Let's head to the tee at two and Louis who started beautifully with that birdie that's given Stinger an eight-stroke lead. Got him to within two of Wako Neiman. He's playing for a pretty sizable little fade here. Well, the wind could help it, but... Cameron Tringale for birdie at four for the High Flyers. Phil Mickelson's team seeking a first podium finish, and that'll help. Cameron Tringale teed off at four with a birdie, and the High Flyers are 21 under par. A tie for second, but already 10 behind the Stingers. Now Abe Anser on the tee at two, he's not trying to hit the same shot. He looks like he's just trying to hit one dead straight up the left center. Tiny little fade at that. You get up predominantly off the right, but you got a touch of hurt in there, you know what I mean? Co crack first to play at yeah. one. I'm like 110, 112. Perfect. Well, with that three wood off the tee, he's well back the others are only 30 40 yards from the pin same wind as has been all week and pretty much every time we come here so these guys should be very familiar with these conditions i'll oh, get down get down get he's down. asking to get down but he looks pretty good yeah i'd say Kevin now off the third tee, difficult par three. A pair of 66s for Kevin Na, and that has got the Ironheads in contention for a podium. Dean Burmester to give the Stingers an absolute flyer on Championship Sunday. That was a few moments ago for birdie at four. Dean seven under par, Stinger already 31 under, they lead by nine. What's that? John Rahm on the tee at no. three. And you got another seven to the back edge, almost 200 to the back edge, so. What do you think's playing? You got 90, well, we're trying to land it, say 85, it's playing 205. 5 to 10 shot, I think, is perfect. A little bit of stuff. Exactly. It's a tight second hardest hole. I've only seen nine birdies in the last two days. It's the hardest green to hit. It's an intimidating shot straight into the wind. Intimidating hole location to two, today, yeah. too, Sue Ann, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, Jerry. It doesn't help. No. Tucked in that back right corner, really close to the hazard. He's got four iron here. I don't think he'll try and start this left center of the screen fade it exactly where it started it's trying to fade that's a good shot yeah it's a fine shot there beautiful long iron actually that's a great shot whilst that was happening Waco, our leader played at one There's a good start. Hmm. <laughs> Back to the tier three and Adrian Moronk, Suan. Bit of a shaky start. Bogeyed his first hole. Spent a week in LA at the TPI working on some footwork. He's got four iron.
Well, the High Flyers are trying to hang on to the coattails of the Stingers, and they're doing okay. It's a good start. That was Brendan Steele for his birdie at four. They're back in solo second, but to give you an idea of how quickly the team competition can change with all four scores counting, Smash came into Championship Sunday, seven back of Stinger. That gap already is now 12. Oh, goodness. And High Flyers, what is it, one of four teams yet to, yet win? to win? That would be a story. See if Schwartzel can do that, which he's done for two straight days, and he hasn't done it in his words since the very first event we ever had in London two years ago. That is fill it up from this range. Well, this is our poll today. If you scan the QR code and get involved, and the uh, Live Golf Plus app as well, will we have a first time winner? First time team winner, perhaps? First time individual winner? Will we have both or will we have neither? It looks like a first individual winner. So 55% believe that Waco Neiman isn't going to take the title here. Not only Waco Neiman, but uh, Schwartzel or uh, Grace. They were the only three in the top 10 who previously won. Jason Kokrak to start with a birdie. Wasn't a great deal of conviction in that one, but Jason stays at 10 under. Yeah, that, that was one of those putts where it, if you don't like your backswing, it's unlikely you like the follow through that goes with it. Lucas Herbert is second at number two. Back to the green at one and Waco to extend his lead to three. What a start this would be to his championship Sunday round. Yes, would certainly would be a hollow now. Kokrak's putt from the other side of the hole broke hard from left to right. So you'd imagine Waco's gonna have to move just a tiny bit from right to left. Although judging by the way he's setting up to, I think he's aiming dead straight. This would really settle the nerves. A miss could start playing with his mind. It's so early, but it's so important, you feel. Yes. What? Fucking jump. Walco Neiman has been simply magnificent here in Jeddah. A long way to go, but he leads by three. He's 14 under. Now, the all South African Stinger GC squad is one of the more personable and entertaining teams in all of Live Golf. But don't let those smiles fool you. They're here to win. The Stingers team, we really enjoy having fun off the golf course. But once we get on the golf course, it's down to business. The Stingers motto is grin and grind. We as Africans seems to like to be the underdogs. We grind it out with a smile. Golf has always been individual, you know, and I always thought pressure was a lot more playing in a team environment. It's not always a bad thing to have more pressure. It heightens your senses, it, it heightens your concentration, and sometimes you tend to play better. And that's why you'll hear guys say that the team brings out the best of them. To be part of a team like this is four good friends. It's amazing. If this guy's in, I'll play the next hole in my underwear. <laughs> I cannot do more than that. <laughs> it's as good as it gets. You know, everybody's got each other's back, and um, when I play out there, I look at what the team is doing, and you kind of forget about yourself. Um, for somehow that just triggers me a little bit different, but um, it's worked for me so far. Having all four guys, honestly, that's been quite a cool thing to be a part of. Oh, you're kidding. Getting all the same clothing and being part of a brand, that's something you don't normally get, you know. Golf can be a lonely sport and that aspect is, is really cool. What a moment! Hopefully we can even improve on last season and see if we can win the overall this year.
They had their worst ever finish last time out in Las Vegas. They were 12th place. The conditions not conducive for South Africans. They looked absolutely freezing cold, like they were on a, an Arctic expedition. This is Louis second into the second. He started beautifully. They were 16 over in the final round. 38 shots in the end behind the winner's smash. Charles Schwartz will card it an 80, but he says he's got a memory like a goldfish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which is a real advantage if you're a golfer. And here they are leading the way by nine. John Rahm for birdie at three to get things Number going. Left to right. Wow, and he makes it. That might be a skin there today. 54 players on that hole into the wind. Mm. Ted, guys, Waco here. This won't go more than 20 feet off the ground. And it is, oh, it's turning a lot. It should be, oh, it's actually perfect, I think. Yeah, 20 is generous on that, Don. Yeah. That's his fairway finder. Phil started with birdie at three. This is his third shot at four. Four is a par five. He's Phil Nicholson. And yeah, that is yeah. a really yeah. good shot. But knowing him, he's probably yeah, yeah. wanted better. Yeah, yeah. Suan, Adrian Moronk for par. It wasn't his best attempt in that first putt. Just left himself a really difficult five, six footer here. Don't want to start off with another bogey. Start to get too far behind, especially the way Wako is playing and John Rahm. Uh, that is a tough start to win. Well, Moronk was eight under after a opening round of 62, and he drops to seven under for the competition here on Championship Sunday. Now, Abraham Anza, 63 for him yesterday. This for birdie at two to get to 10 under par. Well, Waco Neiman has started like a champion. He's birded his opening hole the first. He leads by three. Legion 13 are certainly not out of it in the team competition. Kieran Vincent here. All four scores count, of course, this to get them to 23 under. That was his birdie at seven, so they're within eight of the Stingers. Action all over the golf course here. This is Junichiro Kazuma. For birdie at 17 for the Ironheads, who aren't out of it in terms of a potential podium finish. Not been a great week for Ian Poulter, but a great start to Championship Sunday for the Majestics. That was for birdie at 16. Louis for birdie at number two. That's a heck of a start. And it really is. Louis Eusthuizen is in the groove already. Now Phil for birdie to start with back-to-back -back birdies. Well, if he is going to challenge, they have to drop, David. Still early stages on Championship Sunday. Let's uh, take you to the second tee and Charles Schwartzel. Ooh, that looks damp. Here's Kieran Vincent of Legion 13. Open his round with a birdie. Legion 13, 24 under par in solo second place. They won their inaugural event, the expansion team, in Mexico. Do a little left, is it? Yeah. Left usually means long. Carol Hatton at the par 518th. This for Birdie. Ready. 
Brandon Grace to get Stinger to 33 under. What a start for the South Africans, who have carried on on Championship Sunday where they left off on Super Saturday. Grace gets it to nine under par. Stinger 33 under. Already they lead by nine. And their captain is Louis Oosthuizen, who he started with a pair of birdies. They may drop one with Schwartzel in the water at two, but here's Louis. Just uh, backs off it there, trying to revisualize what he's trying to do. Deal shot and a little fade. Try and find that back right flag. That's a very good shot. It'll gather on the slope. Charles Schwartz is preparing for his third shot after hitting the water. Now, golf fans all over the world are downloading the Live Golf Plus app, and for good reason. You can enjoy Live Golf League content, including every shot of Anthony Kim, Ian Poulter, and Wade Ormsby today. You can also rewatch every single round of Live Golf since day one. Download the app today for Live Golf Hong Kong next week. Wade Ormsby, the Aussie, who has plenty of experience in live golf, but arrived here as a reserve, and he's in as a range goat today for Matthew Wolf, who had to withdraw through illness yesterday. We hope to see Matthew in Hong Kong next week. So Wade's score will count for the range goats, but it won't count individually. And Charles Schwartzel has had to drop this a long way back here. He's pushed his tee shot into the water, so this is his third. Yeah, he was aiming his three wood left of the fairway, David. Sometimes when you do that, you come in from the inside and leave the club face open, and that's exactly what happened. This looks pretty good, though. Whoa, Boy, what a shot. Is. Could get away with a par. Oh, that would be a fantastic four if he can make that. Not coke rack. That's it. This time of the day, the wind hasn't been this strong any time this week. If it picks up, it's going to be problematic. Yeah, uh, let's call it 84, four short, 84. Yeah. I mean, you've got to obviously help a little, uh, and it's a touch out of your left. I mean, 84, it's got to be six of help there. 78 shot, 77. Is that what you're liking? I like that. Yeah. You know, Waka Demon here it's over his second shot. You put yourself in this position often enough, you start feeling a lot more comfortable. He looks very, very comfortable. No tension in the eyes or the face that I've noticed. And he could get this really close if he hits his numbers. Down. Down. Looks pretty good. Come on. Yeah, that was a good swing. Well, Stinger are bringing the venom early on Championship Sunday. They started with a seven-shot lead. This is Louis Eustace and the captain for birdie at one. Dean Burmester, he started with a birdie at four. The South Africans are rolling. Louis to go back to back for birdie, uh, his second shot, excuse me, at two, where he would eventually make another birdie, the clean-shaven Stinger captain. All four players are in the top 13 on the pylon individually. They're 33 under par, they lead by nine. Dean Burmester, seven under. Brandon Grace, nine under. Louis, 12 under par in the hunt. So too is Charles Schwartzel on 11 under. John Rahm, second shot here on the fourth. 
helping a little from the right. Whole location today is on the top plateau there, so you want to make sure he carries that slope. Talked really highly about Waco post round yesterday, so he knows he's going to have to get off to a really hot start. Well, someone hit it tight, and it was this guy, Adrian Moronk. Just a moment ago. One more down. The problem is, it's draw five. Yeah, listen, it's a, it's, if you hit like a stock four, it's got kind of like a back. That will cure the bogey bogey start. <laughs> Kevin Na, well, he walked up to that ball and he spoke to Ram and said, How did that happen? I outdrove you. <laughs> He's been working on getting a lot more speed in the off-season. He's been training in the gym with his trainer. It's four iron. Looks like he's gonna try and draw one in here. A lot lower of a ball flight compared to John. Yeah, a good swing. Finds the surface on the par five. Moments ago, Jason Kokrak, his third shot at two. And now live with Waco Neiman for back to back birdies. Certainly changed his routine slightly from last year. It seems to be working. It was an inconsistent year in all facets of his game. It seems like every facet's improved just that little bit, certainly hitting the ball a good 15 yards longer than he did last year. What an advantage that is. Well, action across the golf course here on the shores of the Red Sea. Brooks Kepka started the day five under par, captain of Team Smash. And that was for birdie at 18. He's chasing a three-peat. It's a long shot, but you never know with Brooks. He'll be thinking about a back-to-back -back team victory as well. How about Bryson, his second shot into the eighth? That was for birdie at the par three for the Crushers. Daryl Hatton out at one, his second. This little pitch shot's going to release a little. Well done. Very good. What a par this would be for Charles Schwartzel at two. It would certainly feel like a birdie. Stays 11 under despite finding the water at two. And Stinger stay nine clear. But could it be 10? Here's Louis to start with three birdies. Did he get it high enough to start? Ooh. No. Stinger are dominating the team competition. Waco Neiman's lead individually is two. Rack for par two. Oh my. Hmm. It's a bad putt at one for Birdie. And he needed. The type of player he is, his mindset on the golf course, it was imperative to get off to a good start. Kevin Na, long range for an eagle. He put in that Scotty Cameron in his bag, start of the season. Kenny Harms, his caddy, told me on the range, this is the best he's ever putted. That's scary. Yeah. That is scary, because he was not a bad putter before. No, <laughs> he's a great putter. He has been his entire career. Ah, this putt's all about speed. A lot of wind as well. It's always tough to judge that.
The Ironheads have just faltered after an excellent opening day when they were 12 under par and in fourth place. They're now down in seventh on 18 under. That's only four back of a first podium finish of the season. Brooks Kepka for birdie at one. Back to back birdies for Brooks Kepka, who teed off at 17. John Rahm, this for an eagle. Gotta love his sportsmanship. He walked up and saw Adrian's ball and gave him a clap. Acknowledging the great shot. Now this is uphill, right to left. Go, go. Mm, he had it on oh. line, too. Well, Legion 13 are desperately clinging on in the jet stream of Stinger GC. They've reduced the arrears to eight shots. Tyrrell Hatton with another birdie, and he is eight under par for well, his competition. Well, now there you, are 13 live golf teams, right. each with outstanding golf gear. And now you can represent your favorite well, squad by going to shop.livegolf.com and browse our yeah, online store. Well, Joaquin Neiman doesn't have a four iron in the bag. He's put in this little hybrid instead. Yeah, that's because David, I don't think a four iron will get. Oh, he doesn't have a four iron. Yeah, certainly a five iron won't get there. I can yeah. assure you. It's 209 yards into the teeth of a 20 mile an hour wind, and he is looking left. I can tell, which is the absolute right play. This could be a disaster hole. Well, I can cut it kind of like in the right edge of the bunker and kind of yeah. In the of the tree. Yeah, it's 220 at least. Yeah. Yeah. Happy. Yeah. I heard him say right edge of the bunker. That's 25 yards left of the pin. Yeah, he hit a couple of wonderful shots with this club yesterday. Yeah. Needs to needs to make solid contact. Kevin Nall made his birdie of four to get to nine under. It's not cutting. Is it clearing the bunker? No, it didn't. Wow, what a bunker shot he's left himself. Oh, man. Yeah. Now that shot we saw out of Rom there might be the best shot of the day when it's all said and done. The High Flyers are seeking a podium finish for the first time since Chicago in 2022. This is Andy Ogletree, his second shot a few moments ago at 14. He would make birdie. High Flyers 23 under in solo third place. That is 10 back of the leader's stinger. Schwartzel on the tee now at three. Schwartzel started off exactly the same way he played yesterday, just grinding out pass, keeping the momentum. That was a fabulous part on the last hole. It's stalling into the wind. Should hit the green. Well, the wind is gusting out there at Royal Greens. Wako Neiman, though, in the bunker, but leads by two. Kokrak next. He usually hits a very high ball with a draw. You can't afford to hit it high here. You've got to try and bore it through the wind, which is what he's trying to do. Oh, oh, that could be wet. It needs a good bounce. He got it. That's stay up on the bank, Tom. Yes, it's just right in the bunker. Wow, that's a break. <laughs> That was a great eagle by Adrian Maroc. 
Gives him the honour here on the fifth tee. Yeah, 10 o'clock, same stuff for me, just want it coming down on the, the angle of the tree there in the distance, it's just right at the trap. It's 10 o'clock. Wind down and off the left. It's going to probably try and start this just over the left centre. He likes to hit a draw. Pretty long off the tee, Adrian. Not a big penalty on this hole for missing the fairway compared to many of the others. Probably you need to have a fall in the bunker today, huh? Yes, it's a perfect line. This is Dean Burmester for par at six to keep the lead at seven it is changing by the second that is an excellent effort that is a brilliant putt by Dean Burmester and he recognizes the importance and significance of it Stinger lead Legion 13 by seven shots John Rahm next on the tee well as we've seen already he aims it way left especially out here in the desert not a lot of trees in the way softy Jason Kokrak here is a right-hander. And that looks like it's going to be a very awkward stance. But it'll be Neiman first from way over in the left-hand bunker. Everything in your body tells you this is a chunk and run to use the slope. But if you catch it a touch heavy with playing into the wind, it's not going to get there. No, well, it should get close that's given the situation not yeah. bad yeah yes yes perfect who stays in with a fairway wood at the par five number four Only two par fives on the course. The next one they play will be their last hole. That's a miscue there for a hole that you have to make birdie on. Legion 13 are currently in second place by seven shots. This is Kieran Vincent, his second shot at nine. Par four. Mm. Oh, that's wet. That is shaved, that bank. No sooner do they close the gap on Stinger, it looks like they may fall back. Well, I'd love to see the live line on this putt. Yeah, really. At the apex of the putt, it's got to be almost 20 feet left of the hole. So much slope to deal with too, and it's going to be fairly quick the last 15 feet. Looks like he's aiming at you, Don. <laughs> You see me? Oh, yeah. Uh-oh. There'll be a fine later. It needs to slow down a touch. Yeah. It's not bad from there. Second shot for Lucas Herbert at the fourth. Just an iron for Lucas, averaging really low for a par five, 4.38, through two rounds. He was in the first group to tee off at one with Abraham Anser and Louis Oosthuizen. He had it on a great line. Coaxing it in the air, that's a good shot.
back in the third. Jason Kokrak managed to chop that with his feet in the bunker and the ball outside. Got it to here. This is for power. Well, he got away with the tee shot. Well, he kind of got away with it. Yeah. You know, <laughs> to end up in that line was, yeah. uh, was unlucky. Well, it's early, uh, Dom. I, I definitely have it just outside, yes. So you see... No, not more. You see this thing here? It needs to just go. It needs to just go to the to the left of that. So, okay. Dom, it's early, but this is a big putt. He pointed to a huge par putt. He made it nine yesterday for uh, as a, one of the many reasons why he was able to put himself in this position. But this one's kind of big here. Yeah, I mean, and he obviously trusts Gary Matthews. Implicitly, he, I mean, he's the one reading the lines. Animal, as he's known, has a ton of experience on every different type of surface. And if your nickname's Animal, I'm listening to you. <laughs> yeah, you're right. This is... They're big moments all the time when you've got a two-shot lead. Oh. Wow. Never left the live line there. It's a beautiful putt. Let's get you caught up with action elsewhere. Todd Kay, who are captained by Waco Neiman, who preserves his two shot lead, contains Carlos Ortiz, and that's his birdie putt at 11. He was victorious in the International Series, not too far away in Oman last weekend. Graham McDowell, he was MVP for Smash GC when they took the title in Vegas a couple of weeks ago. He's at it again on Championship Sunday. That was for birdie at 16. This was just a moment ago at nine. This is for par for Kieran Vincent. John Keep in there just the way you want. Two shot. Second shot on the fifth. Been trying to decide which club to go with the last couple of minutes with his caddy Adam. He's gone with a nine. Whole locations on a very small landing spot. Everything slopes left to right there. Schwartzel made his part at three. Ah, the wind just caught that. Well, John Rahm made it very clear he came to the Live Golf League to win. He's in contention yet again, but he knows there's work to do to get to the top of the podium. A spectacular superstar signing. Very little rust there in uh, John Rahm's game. I'm pleased so far, but I wouldn't say I had my best in either one of those two weeks. John Rahm charging in Las Vegas. Vegas, that, that rally on the last 10 holes of that second round put me in the tournament, but didn't quite feel great in really any aspect of my game. Uh, just managed it well enough to be in contention. Just perfect. And then Mayakoba, same. I drove it really well all week, and that's what kept me in, but the rest of my game was okay. It wasn't anything that was special. So just looking forward to getting into a better shape throughout the year and, and maybe start approaching that, you know, the higher level that, that I've been able to play in the past. Great players do great things. I managed my game very, very well those two tournaments and I'm happy to be up there. You're never going to have your best every single week, right? So it's the trick of competition to try to perform at the highest level. Vamos, John Rahm. The goal was to come and, and make an impact. If no one making an impact, I mean win. And you gotta keep giving yourself chances, and that's what I've done so far. Well, John looks like he's going to continue his streak of top 10 finishes. Will it be any better? Here's AK back in the big time. 15 over par and his first tournament back in almost 12 years. That was his third shot at 18. 
got off to his final 11 holes yesterday. He got off to a, just a horrendous start. It could have gotten ugly yesterday for a guy who hadn't played in 12 years. And yeah, that was pretty remarkable what he did. Waco Dom with that shot he doesn't hit. He didn't used to have right there. The high draw. And he's very comfortable with it. Yeah, very comfortable. That's the difference in his game. Up on the green is Lucas Herbert. He's putting for Eagle here to get to 10 under. Way wide. Uh, yes, I'm okay with you. Adrian Moronk for a birdie. Long range. Didn't have a great lag putt on the third. Hoping for a better one here uphill right to left. Takes a very big backswing. Arena two. This is Brooks Kepka for par. Ooh. Oh, 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 rejected. That is not often you see a complete 180 like that and it comes back at you. Anthony Kim for birdie at 18. He did make his par. Abraham Anser at four did not manage to hit this green in two, so that's just a par. To the fifth, John Rahm. Can he start a charge here? This to get to within two of Waco Neiman. Got a good read from Adrian's putt. Just looking at this whole location today, it's not a big landing spot. You're going to see a lot of putts from where John is. It's going to be slow, especially with the wind. Ooh, good positive effort there. Tyrrell Hatton for birdie at two. For Legion 13, that's three in a row for the Englishman. And it's good news for Legion 13, who are within seven. But Louis Eusthuizen could extend that lead again, but that slides by. So Legion 13 just eating into that lead established by Stinger. It could go all the way in the team competition. The High Fly is looking for at least a podium finish for the first time in a while. That was Phil Mickelson for birdie at three. He's their captain, John Rahm, leader of Legion 13, the expansion team who won their first ever competition in Mexico to start the season. This is his tee shot at three. Legion 13 collectively are four under par for the day. And they've got it to within seven of Stinger, which was the overnight lead for the South Africans, who are also four under so far today. That was Louis birdie put at one. There's our scoreroom graphic from the team standpoint. And Stinger just continuing to climb and climb and climb at a faster pace than any of the others. That's Kevin Na. Comes up a little shy. Lucas Herbert did make his birdie over at the par five fourth. This is the seventh green at Dean Burmester. Birdie chance. All four scores count towards the team totals on Championship Sunday. It is a free-for-all, and it's volatile. It can change very, very quickly. Burmester, absolutely magnificent from Dean. Born in Zimbabwe, now a South African national. And Stinger's lead is back to eight, and Dean himself is eight under par. You fight it back up in there, it is. Oh, I'm not really fighting it, but I don't really want to start five iron in the middle of that bunker. Okay. You okay with that? I'm fine with it, yeah. I mean, I would say the front's probably playing 210. You like the five better? I like I, like I mean, I, I just I like think with just better. a good, good solid one, you know what I mean? I think it gets the front and bounces up, you know what I mean? Yeah. I really do. I agree. 
three great tee shots from the players. Surprisingly, Schwartz was the longest. Now, five iron, you heard him. Once the land it just on the front edge, he thinks it will bounce up. He's aiming out to the right, so trying to get the wind to help it. Boy, that line looked good for a long time. Settle. The tee at six and John Rahm. Straight into the breeze here. So it's a tight second hardest hole all week this week. We've only seen 10 birdies here. It's a really tough green to hit. Only 50% of the field hit it. So you really have to hit the fairway here. It would certainly help. Going with a lower one. Back to four and Wako Neiman with well, his second shot. Yeah, if Jason Colcraft hit five iron and he was a good 15 yards behind, I can't imagine this is more than a seven. It could be a six, but I reckon it's a seven. As he's, especially as he's looking a little right, he's one of wants to ride the wind. It's only 204 to the front edge. Yeah. That's what he wants to land it. 204, 205. We got him 221 all the way to the hole. That was a pretty good rip at it. A little left, but should be pin high. Walko Neiman is holding firm so far today on Championship Sunday as he looks to win his second live title out of three. Just a ripped tee shot from Charles, just really riding the wind. A little bit left of Warcos. Cameron Smith over at 15 from the rough. to the 18th and Scott Vinson whose memories of success here at Royal Greens will be fresh he came into the final regular season event here in October some 17 points outside of the lock zone which is the top 24 in the Live Golf League top 24 are guaranteed a spot for the following season and he came fourth with a magnificent effort and here he is for the whole season in 2024 playing for the Ironhead. Steve Bermister on the tier day coming off his birdie at seven. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Thanks. Bryson DeChambeau, who started so well on Friday with a 63, that after double bogeying his first hole, but he slipped back to five under par. This is his second shot of the tenth. Oh, just grabs on him, threw out an anchor. Back to the fourth, and it should be Charles first. It will be Charles first. Got to take advantage of these holes today. The holes where you, know, you, you should right. walk off with a birdie. And all three players should walk off with no more than four. We might even see a three. Certainly Wako's part is, looks quite good. Good 
whilst we wait for Charles before uh, Bryson DeChambeau a few moments ago. Kieran Vincent played his second into the tenth, and that yeah. was more like... That's what Bryson was looking for. Absolutely. Back to four. Mm. Three eagle attempts here. It's an attempt, David. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good 45 feet. He's, he's putting into the wind, so even though these greens, nice speed to them, lovely surface, they have been all week. They were a little slow during the practice rounds, but they're no longer all that slow. But this one will be slow because he is putting directly into the wind. You'd almost be surprised if he gets it past the hole. Good effort, yeah. very good effort. That really is. Well, Tyrrell Hatton. He's only playing his third Live Golf tournament, of course, having signed the week before Mexico. And he's running hot for Legion 13. He teed off at 17 with a par four. He's reeled off three consecutive birdies at 18, at one, and here at the second hole as well. So. Legion 13 are 26 under par, four under for the day. They're still nine back of Stinger, but they look the team most likely to hunt them down. And Tyrrell Hatton is nine under par for the competition. And here's his skipper. Well, part one of this hole's done. He hit the fairway. Now the you second part. Down here. Just trust that, you know, up, up there it's like half and half. It's kind of coming from right over here where this card is. Well, one more will be more of a face shot. Yeah, no, it's not one more. You got the right one. 173. I mean, yeah. perfect. See the flight. Hull locations in the narrowest part of the screen, back left. Into the wind and from the right, he's got six iron. I'm only a 15% win probability as things stand right now. Yeah, I'm surprised to see Louis Oosthuizen only at 12% there. He's a couple of shots back. Sean Rahm asking Adam Hayes if he thought it was one more there and kind of in between clubs probably. To the fourth green and Waco Neiman for Eagle. Whoever's doing the calculations, they don't understand the game of golf. It's all done statistically. That is data driven. There is no subjectivity to it, Dom. No. You don't know what's going through these guys' minds. <laughs> Boy, this is good. Uh oh. Oh. Right, right. right. But. To the green at eight, and Dean Burmester for. A third birdie of the day and a second in succession here on the eighth. Tyrrell Hatton's run of three birdies comes to an abrupt end. He has uh, bogeyed the third, so Legion 13 dropped to 26 under nine back, and it could be 10 if Burmester drains this one. Oh, no. You expected that to curl a little left? stayed there and that may well be the wind this is as strong as a breeze as we've seen all week par put for cam who's one over par today his mood would not have been improved by his beloved brisbane broncos getting thrashed in las vegas last night as the australian rugby league started their season with a double header in vegas how about a weather delay mm. playing in a dome 
Yeah, the, the, apparently the tailgate had to be cancelled, but the crowd was 40,000. I'd imagine hmm. a majority of vacationing Aussies, which would have been rather lively, I would imagine. Nice shot there from Kazuma. Waco ascends to the tee at five. Left to right? Yes. That's what hurt, if any. Yeah. His lead is three. Perfect. I tell you, Jerry, David, I've noticed this year when Waco hits his driver, there's a lot of movement at the club. It's almost like the club's not settled when he takes it back. Just have a look at him. You know what, Dom? He does the same thing putting. Yeah. By the time he puts that right hand on, finally looks at the hole, it's already in motion. Yeah. Yeah, it, it wasn't like that in previous years. Whatever he's doing, it is working. It's left. All at the mercy of the lie there. Waco, he leads by three. Is that an angry bird in his back? Schwartz on next. It's a lot of punch lines to that question, Arlo. <laughs> downwind he can keep up with the big boys but into the wind it just feels like he gets a little more spin on the ball doesn't go quite as far it's also got a 44 inch driver to the green at seven and Brandon Grace for birdie he's a stinger One or two missed opportunities for the South Africans to extend what is an already healthy advantage of nine strokes. Well, here's another opportunity, albeit a difficult one. Louis at five. So that's the state of play here on Championship Sunday. 14 holes to play for John Rahm. Waco Neiman leads by three over a pair of Stingers. Louis Oosthuizen and Charles Schwartzel. And Stingers have extended their overnight lead of seven to a commanding nine over Legion 13. Here's John Rahm, the Legion 13 captain. A long range putt for birdie at six. He jumped in really quickly after Kevin's putt. It was directly on his line. Got a good read. It's gonna wanna push his ball right in the first bit. And then it's gonna come back to the left. That second shot was about three, four yards from being perfect. If he can birdie a hole like sixth, he's gonna be ahead of the field, considering how tough it's playing.
This week, several young people from the Nida Al Amal Association with special education needs visited Royal Greens for an immersive golf learning experience. Live Golf, in conjunction with Golf Saudi, has been working with the association to run a series of introductory golf programs with the aim of giving students an introduction to golf and the life values the sport provides. The group enjoyed a walk along the par 3 16th hole that borders the Red Sea and, thanks to the Royal Green staff, practice bunker raking, hole cutting and repairing ball marks. Then they were joined by Ripper GC's Matt Jones and Smash GC's Jason Kokrak, who helped them put their golf skills to the test thanks to a mini team competition. Celebrating what the programme has accomplished, the golfers enjoyed lunch on site and reflected on the experience. It's all part of Live Golf's Potential Unleashed, which continues to make a positive impact on community around the world. Caleb Surratt came back down to earth with a bit of a thud yesterday on day two. The 19-year-old with a 75. But all four scores count today, of course, and that's birdie for Caleb. And Legion 13 closed the advantage, or the deficit, I should say, to eight shots on Stinger GC. Now then, Dom, what's going on here? Well... Marco's going to be the last to play, but he's on the cart path. He's asked for a ruling, and it looks like I thought he might not even drop it. Why the ruling? Well, uh, you know these guys—they—they're always just in case, just to be careful. And then it releases. You're going to be able to place it there. Yeah. Yeah, that's good thinking. If they do take relief, they drop it on the down slope. It will roll back on the car path, and they can place it because he I mean, will be on a down slope. Stuff. I mean, yeah. I would say that the car path is going to be there, probably there. You might, you might be, you might be a bit more there for the angle. Adam, we're reminded in our ears. Uh, there might be a good reason for a, a ruling on a pretty basic drop. This I mean, is exactly what he got it. penalized for yeah. in Mayakoba. Yeah. Well, meanwhile, on the tier six is Louis Oosthuizen. of the Alfred Dunhill in South Africa in December. He followed that up with victory in the Mauritius Open. Second in Oman last week. And challenging here in Jeddah. Jason Kokrak from the dirt. And it was blind. Oh, wow. What a great Beautiful. effort. Oh, everyone's in the dirt. <laughs> Uphill life for Charles here, Tom. No, to be honest, Jerry, I didn't manage to get over there. There's like 150 yards between the two. <laughs> <laughs> I take your word for it. Yeah, it was an uphill lie in the dirt. It's found the front edge of the green. City Tan Prasut, Asian Tour official, is making his way. All I can think of is that he's, there's a cart track there in the dirt. And that might be a concern for him, whether he can drop in that or... He or, wants to be on that track, Jerry, yeah. because then it's a firm lie. The rest yeah. of it around it's pretty soft. He wants to land it on the cart track and hopefully it... Yeah, bounces. It gets bounced onto the cart path. Right hand page again. From there, one Yes, that's fine. Not sure. That's amazing. He is just gun shy about taking relief from a cart path after Mayakoba. Okay, drop again. John Rahm on the tee at seven. Downwind. He's going to take this down the left hand side. Just 
fade it, ride the wood as much as he can. Hasn't been very accurate off the tee this week. Certainly Wait, is no. all day today. That's big right there. Well, the last time Waco Neiman was in contention, he beat Sergio Garcia in virtual darkness in Mayakoba on a fourth playoff hole. Sergio with birdie at 13 for the five balls. Looks like they won't be defending their title here in Jeddah. Taylor Gooch for birdie at seven to get to five under par. And that could yet be significant for Team Smash, who want to go back to back. It's a long shot. They're down in sixth place on 20 under par, but only two back of a podium finish. Oh. How about that from Sergio? That was his third shot at 14. Yeah, 119 is total. So you pitch at 119, uh, it's probably playing. I mean, the shot you're trying to hit and stuff like that, uh, probably 26 shot, okay. you thinking? Yeah, I mean, even if I landed on the back, which is playing, everything is playing the back of the green. Well, I mean, I'm saying five of five of hurt. You you feel like you've got five of hurt. I mean, just... yeah. So I mean, you know, twenty. You've got six more. So nineteen. You, you're playing five of hurt is a twenty-four shot. Okay. And then Perfect. you got one thirty to the back. Perfect. Well, it's a harder shot than it looks. It's on a down slope with the ball below his feet. He's liable to play this a little farther back in his stance. Try and catch that ball first. And it's completely blind. To be honest, a little short right would leave himself an uphill putt. It's a very good play. That sounded like the club actually hit the path. Yeah, well, uh, it's, a good, it's a good shot. Yeah, could have been a lot worse. Oh, yeah. Off that downhill we'll Take line. a look at the contact here. Yeah, he definitely played that back in his stance and made sure that... Well, as you'll know... The club face on the ball first. Sorry, David. Waco, of course, recently received an invitation to participate oh. in the Masters. The... 25-year-old is one of golf's rising stars and was excited to know he'll have a shot at the green jacket. I actually never never thought I was going to be getting an invite. Do you want to play the majors? I mean, I, I'm, I'm just ready. I thought it was just needed to be inside the top 50 and just trying to do that, playing a little bit more. I mean, I want to win majors, but I get, I get, I get in first. All right, well, you're going to get in. OK, you're going to get in. They got the best call I could ever had coming from Agasta. They needed a verbal, a verbal yes from me. Not saying that I confirmed that I want to accept the invitation. I'm like, yeah, I want to accept it. <laughs> Masters invites last week as well for Waco. Congratulations to the Chilean on that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> doesn't get any better. Yeah, I can imagine saying, like, oh, I'll check my diary, see what I'm doing that weekend, but I think I'm yeah. free. You know what's funny is we, we got on, I got on my high horse and talked about golf rankings later that day when we were closing the show, and David said he will be in the Masters. How in the world did you think that was going to happen? Well, they, they want the best field possible. It's the Masters. You know, how can you not have Waco Neiman? Well, victory in the Australian Open qualified him for the Open Championship, right. so two down and I guess two to go. Yeah. Schwartzel for birdie at five. You can watch all of Anthony Kim's uh, shots on Live Golf Plus. This is his second shot into the second as he makes his dramatic comeback after almost 12 years out of the game. Yeah. Completely out of the game. Louis at the sixth. Go! Didn't get the contact he wanted there. The green at six. 
You saw the spin on his second shot, spin away from the hole because it's, he's landing on a down slope that runs away. So he's going to put up that slope into the wind. Extremely slow putt. Love his putting stroke. There's a lot of similarities with Cam Smith's stroke. Long backswing, very square club face, not a lot of follow through. Good guy to copy. Yeah. Started right at the initial aiming point from the live line. Now your putt. Four is very good here. Yeah. Especially after that tee shot. Mm -hmm. Brooks for birdie at four. His smash GC are on the fringes of the podium, and that'll help as well. He gets it back to seven under par. Uh, smash a 21 under, only one back of the high flyers in third. John. Arriving on the green at seven, Suan. Yeah, he absolutely plastered that drive and put himself in a great position. Good angle into this whole location from the left side of this fairway. A lot of green to work with. It is downwind, so we'll take some spin off. is around yesterday went to the putting green hit a few putts but didn't spend too much time there he then went into the locker room and mentored Caleb who had a rough day yesterday gave him some words of advice part of being a captain now for John oh, oh. what a shot yummy Louis missed the green at the six with his second shot. He's left himself this one over the bunker. He's got to throw it up there and land it softly. Yeah, it's, that's not great. Schwartzel needs this for par to keep the Eight shot lead for Stinger. And Captain Ustay is in serious jeopardy of dropping one. The green at two, AK for birdie. Open with a 76. When the nerves were jangling on Friday, 76 again yesterday, but he parred his final 11 holes and AK. Strokes it home for birdie. It's going to be a process to get anywhere close, I suppose, in the short term to the magic that he produced early in his career. Well, the short term's not a concern. It's going to take a while. Yeah. Straight back at it in Hong Kong next week. Oh, a Moronk from a difficult stance. What a good ah, shot, good shot that is. Good shot. Good shot. Abraham Anter putting from off the green, out at six. It's Captain Sergio Garcia made one from a similar spot with the putter. Walco Neiman, our leader, has arrived at the T at six, he's two under par for his round so far, 15 under for the competition, and he has a healthy three-stroke lead. Come on. Short of the bunker? 
Uh, it certainly looked like it. Kevin Na, great opportunity for a birdie. Laid off off the tee, laid up, pardon me, with a three wood. Gave himself a comfortable wedge distance. Paid off. Should move left to right. I think he's just waiting for the guys on the sixth tee to tee off. I spoke to Kenny, I said, why is he playing so good? He says, well, the first two years, he didn't really have that time to focus on himself. He was focusing on building his team. And then this off season, he really decided to spend time on his game, his fitness. Well, Stinger GC have been competitive from the word go in Live Golf, winning our first event in London. And it's been plain sailing so far in Saudi Arabia here. Louis Oosthuizen, that was his second shot into the second hole. He birded his opening two holes of the day. They led by seven overnight coming into Championship Sunday. Dean Burmester has found some great form as well. He's two under his round. An eagle putter here for Charles Schwartzel. He made birdie at four. So Stinger a six under for the round. That's the low score in the field so far. 35 under overall. They lead by eight. John Rahm made his birdie at seven as Dean Burmester tees off at ten. Hmm. Now then, Louis though to save par at six. That's a great up and down from a very awkward spot. Steely, Britain and Steel. He's on the tier 10. Big day for the high flyers, Jerry. Yes. Currently third. at the eighth tee three under for his round so far through his opening six holes the live golf league continues to change the way the game is played it's also always improving on an amazing fan experience unlike anything else in golf to see it for yourself in 2024 just scan the qr code on the screen for tickets to future events next week we're bringing the league to hong kong for the very first time and we'd love to see you there then in april live golf will be back in miami and looking forward to a great week in south florida get your tickets and enjoy the golf. Be quick, though. Uh, Hong Kong is virtually sold out. I was walking up with Kevin Na to this eighth tee. I said, great birdie. He goes, yeah, the mortal way. <laughs> well, today's whole location on the eighth, very similar to yesterday, just a little more to the right. Playing 166. Pushing it a touch. It's pushing it, yeah, slightly to the right. Okay. And he's on a ball striking clinic today. Hasn't missed a drive or an iron shot. So solid. Continues to be so. And we'll take you to the ninth to check in on Phil. Phil's Captain of those high flyers. Yeah, started with a birdie on the difficult par three, number three. He like and Rom, right the, the only two birdies there. Far. Up to right, you know, just yeah. like at the just right of the yellow flag. Yeah. But I feel like six is not enough. It's like 205 through the through the green there. And if I feel like if I, I'm gonna have to hit that a little hard and round it. Yeah. 
I kind of think it's just like a stock five. It might be a, it might be a little much. I mean, I probably want to. Yeah, I'm in between five, six. Yeah. What are you thinking? If we're trying to get, if we're trying to get it so we can get all the way back, I do think it's the five. I just want to make sure I get it far enough that way so that if it does, if, if it turns with the green, it doesn't go in the water. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. I guess if it goes long, if it goes over, it's no big if deal, it goes right? Long, it's, it's fine. Yeah. But we definitely have a little hurt. Would you agree? Yes, we have hurt on this. Okay. Look at the flag right with the confirmation. All right. I, the reason I like this is I don't really need to turn it. Yep. The wind will move it, but yep. I don't need to help it. Yep. There was a lot of thinking going on there. Well, going with the five based on that conversation. Mm-hmm. You know, David, you mentioned his advancing age. Uh, it, it could obviously, father time takes a toll on everybody, but he still has the same speed. There's no, there's no yeah. logical reason he can't play the type of golf he played at his peak years. Yeah, I mean, he has the flexibility and the strength. He's uh, same weight now that he was in college. Won the PGA at age 50. Nearly won the Masters a year ago, finishing second. And that was exactly the right club, as it turns out. I mean, my ball is, is right here, my stance. Yeah. Okay. And then nearest point will be just out of there. Yeah. Which will be here. Yeah. Right okay. here. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, come in from here, the hole from there. Could get on the fairway. Not yeah, quite. Yeah, He's pick it up and clean it, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Well, the Ironheads are seeking a rare podium finish, but they are in a tie for third now. Danny Lee, who won individually in Tucson last year via a playoff. That was the only time the Ironheads have been on the podium, but they're tied on 22 under for third with Phil's high flyers. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And the ball's in play. Thank you. So like a... Where is it down? No. 83. It's such a pitch 83. Well, I mean, it can pitch 83 with this wind playing. It nice. can pitch also to the hole, almost. You know, I mean, it, it, it's a little out of your right. Anything inside that top, I mean, how far right can it, can it land? Well, I mean, it, if you, if you, are you trying to hit five iron? Yeah. Okay. You see that guy standing there? There's yeah. a little, there's a wall. Yeah. So that it, pole right there? Yeah, that pole. Anything inside that? In, is, inside that, it's still green. And it, and, it, and I'd, uh, it can't. Well, let's say 85. Yeah, 85. I mean, this is playing, 85 is playing at least 200. You like this club, eh? Flighted? Yeah, I mean, it needs to be flighted, uh, 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 maybe using the wind just to touch? Yeah, I'm going to use the wind. Yeah. Right here? Yeah, exactly. You don't need me when you got these two. Yeah, we saw the little hand signal. It is a uh, five iron. Gary gave you five. Yeah, it's it's quite. He's just, where they were discussing. It's a long way right of the pin, right edge of the green. Not I thought they were at the TV tower. Oh, it's turning over Stop. beautifully. Stop. They, they need to sit down. Uh, uh, Good shot. It's an excellent shot. I mean, it could be great. I mean, I thought it came out perfect. Walco almost that smiled. Was a good drop because I think further it was fucking red. Cameron Smith for birdie at 17. This is the seventh. Looks like Louis waiting for a bouncer in the distance there to mark his ball. Second shot for Louis. 
three back of Waco Neiman, captain of the Stingers, who are seven clear in the team competition of Legion 13. Beautifully played. That's Scott Vincent, his second shot at the second hole. Adrian Morant on the green at eight. Hit a beautiful long iron into this whole location. I spoke to his caddy, Stewart. I said, does he like playing in the wind? He goes, if you asked me three years ago, I would say no. <laughs> but now he's gained so much more control over his ball flight. Now this should move to his left. John Rahm is for birdie on the eighth. <coughs> Hit a very, very good six iron. And he's striping it today. Different ball striking round compared to yesterday. Left to right. To the green at seven, Abraham answer for birdie. Made six consecutive birdies in his round of 63 yesterday. One off the record for our Live Golf League and our brief history. Well, that was for par for Brandon Grace, his fourth shot at nine. So. It could yet get interesting in the team competition, particularly with John Rahm playing as well as he is today. So too Tyrrell Hatton and Caleb Surratt. A lot of pressure on Kieran Vincent to perform his level par for his round so far. Maybe you left to right stop. Yes. And then it's straight. Yeah. Go back and just show me again, please. Perfect. Guys, I can't tell you how good that second shot was. The way it pierced the wind and drew is exactly as how he and Gary pictured it. Magnificent shot to get it to this back section of the green. Doesn't have to deal with a, a big slopey putt. He's in control. He sees Ram's name only three shots back. Oh. Agonizing. Well, Taylor Gooch pushed Brooks Kepka all the way here in October. A two hole playoff. Brooks won that one, but Taylor took the spoils as our. Live Golf League champion for 2023, and he's playing nicely today. He's six under par after that uh, latest birdie, which was at the ninth. Ooh, Kevin Na tweaks one pass there, and that one was for par. And 
Taylor's birdie there has got Smash above the high flyers into third place on 23 under. But here's Phil Mickelson. What can he do about that? Elsewhere, Louis Oosthuizen, who is captaining Stinger and leading from the front. This is for birdie at seven. And Louis is not out of the mix either. He's 13 under par. Stinger get it to 35 under par, and that is a lead of six. John Rahm on the tee at nine. This is the hardest fairway to hit this week. Only 26 players have found it, because it's about 20 yards wide. And wind off his back. He's going to start this way left. Water there, is it? Yeah, that'll hold up short of it. Uh, Adrian's been having some issues with the driver and his opening few holes. He's managed to put his game together mid range. Be nice for him to find a fairway here. Spoke to him earlier this week. He said he's trying to work on his backswing. He says he's trying to just move off the ball a little bit better. He started getting a little too stacked on his left side. Sometimes that can be a very uncomfortable feeling. Feel a sense of loss of control. He likes to draw a ball. Big kick down into the, oh, hang on there. That is short of that monument, we hope. Louis on the tee at the eighth. Another beautiful shot. And back at six, this is just a moment ago, Charles Schwartzel for par. And that misses, so Stinger dropped one. It wasn't long ago they led by ten. The lead is now five over Legion 13. I remember a really smart guy telling me it can change in the blink of an eye. <laughs> well, actually, no, it was you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I copied it off the smart guy. Drone tracer technology, one of the many innovations Live Golf has brought to our viewers to bring you inside the game with a never before seen look at professional golf. Beautiful tee shot right there. Barely believable that we've yet to see Dustin Johnson so far today, but here he is. He was uh, right up there after an opening round 66, fell away a little yesterday. He was over par for his round. Three under overall, and DJ sinks one from distance. One under par for his round so far, but the four aces are just not factoring at the moment there. In 10th place, 14 under par, that's nine strokes off the podium. Cam Smith at the 18th. Ooh, that one just sneaks over the water. The tee at seven, Charles Schwartzel coming off a bogey. He's back to 11 under. And he needs to keep it to the left side of this fairway. Can't miss it right here with this pin and this wind. It's Championship Sunday here 
and Livgolf Jeddah, both titles in the balance. Neiman leads Oosthuizen by two. Stinger lead Legion 13 by only five. Working hard. Got my latte. It's Patrick Reed and the long pants on the tee at five. If you want to be taken seriously, Jerry, wear long pants. It's just. I'm just saying. <laughs> You're just saying. Yeah. Saw you in a pair of shorts once. Yeah. But one, you, once. It was, it was a joke. You for making fun of him. Well, GMAC says he wants to be held accountable at this stage of his career, and Brooks Kepka, now his captain with Team Smash, is doing that. And GMAC is responding. His second shot into the first. He made his birdie there. Hudson Swafford is one of our two wild cards in 2024. With Anthony Kim, that was for his birdie at one. GMAC is uh, one under par for his round so far today. All four scores count, and that's helped smash onto the podium. At the moment, 23 under par. Nah, from the rough. Yeah, hard not to miss the green left from there. Oh, he's done really well. Hit a little fade into the center of the green. Didn't get the bounce forwards, but that's a good shot. Yeah. Why didn't that jump forward? Get the attendant. Kevin's ball land. I think you're going to love it. Definitely has a little hurt in it. Definitely has a flyer, though. Yes. So those two should probably you know, somewhat cancel out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, love I it. think the flyer would is going to out, outweigh the Yeah, just give yourself some room, man. Like, you know, see your start line, see it finish on his ball. It's going to be coming in sideways with no spin. It's going to release back there. Oh, I agree. Right here. Yeah, I think it's more of a line thing here right now. Yeah, see your shot, buddy. John Rump, second here at the ninth. Lie is good. He's probably going to want to start this at Kevin's ball. Just about 25, 30 feet left of it. Seven iron. Oh, sit down. Sit. Oh, Hit it hard, Wayne. Hit it a little. Hit it very hard. Yeah, that's the left miss. That's so easy. Oh, well, Fairway to Heaven is the Live Golf League's first podcast. And in spite of being co hosted by Terry Foltz, <laughs> it's doing rather well. That might be down to Sue Ann Hank. Absolutely. They recently, we're joined by Bryson DeChambeau, who shared his thoughts on Augusta. Speaking of the majors, you already won the US Open. Mm -hmm. What's the next one like that you have your eyes on? I've always wanted to win the Masters. Um, Ever since I was an amateur and before that, when I was growing up watching Tiger chip in on 16, that really kind of sold it for me. I was like, okay, this is the next event I want to win and the prestige behind it and the air around it. And then when I saw Augusta and experienced the people there, and I certainly love coming back there every single year. And um, I believe I'm going to get it done one of these days. It's just a matter of time and continued hard work and uh, learning from my failures. I think you'll look good in a green jacket. <laughs> I think I didn't shave to, a little might, bit, but you know that, they might have yeah. to they might have to fit the the guns and everything yeah. for the Hopefully. all your muscles there. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's gonna be the most jacked, you know, green jacket winner. That'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> just think of the content you would because you get to keep it for a year. Just think of the oh content. Oh my gosh! Oh geez. Remember Tiger uh, at Thanksgiving, him wearing the green jacket at Thanksgiving or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Or whatever he did, he had the trophy and this like that sort of that that would be cool yeah. just to do stuff like that. That'd be fun. Louis has this for par eight. I remember Patrick Reed going through. Uh, no, it was Bubba going through a drive through. Patrick Reed ate it uh, like Cracker Barrel in the green jacket Sunday <laughs> night once he got done with his media <laughs> obligations. This is actually the birdie for Louis. Well, that's a missed chance. 
Now Louis for par. Brandon Grace, his second shot at 10. Level par for his round so far. Stinger's lead was five. It's now, it was 10. It's now five, and it may get better yet. Danny Lee for birdie at two. Well, the Ironheads have crept back up the pylon. And that's how they've done it. So they're 22 under par. They're one back of smash. They're level for fourth with the Crushers. Uh, correction, it was Mickelson who went through a Krispy Kreme drive through with his first green jacket. That's considerably more risky. You think, you know what, maybe you, you get a, like one of the jelly filled ones and the next thing you know it's all over your green jacket. Not a good look. Not an easy shot here for Schwartzel. Not a tall straight downwind. Oh, oh, that was unlucky. Well, the top three teams at the moment on the pylon are Stinger, Legion 13 and Smash. This is Brooks Kepka, captain of Smash, who won the title in Las Vegas, strengthened his team in the off-season, a free agent pickup of Graham McDowell and a eyebrow-raising trade for Taylor Gooch. John Rahm is captain of Legion 13. The expansion team, our 13th team, that was his second shot into seven. They trail Stinger by six. Louis U stays for birdie at seven. So Stinger lead by six. And Smash are on the podium as it stands. If, if Waco had asked me to put the ball in a spot that's not on the green, this is where I would have put it. Oh, he'll be a bit disappointed with that. Yeah, just didn't quite beat the slope the way he wanted. Here's Phil. No green jacket. Andy Ogletree's made a double oh. bogey six at the first. The high flyers have dropped to 19 under, so they're down in seventh all of a sudden. This is a par putt for Tyrrell Hatton at six, and that slides by. So Stinger's lead over Legion 13 is now back to six strokes. Gonna give that ball a good staring too. This is the green at 11. Dean Burmester of Stinger GC. Two under for his round at the moment. That's for par. That maintains the lead for Stinger. In fact, it's now seven strokes. No one is catching Stinger, says one of our viewers at home. This is John Rahm. A oh, delightful bunker shot back towards the water. No problem. Taylor Gooch for birdie at 10. For smash, well, good job. Right good job. his third team in three years. He's won titles with all three now, and he's got smash into third place solo on 24 under. And here's Jason Kokrak, his teammate, to make that situation even better. This for birdie at seven. Ironheads are surging back up the pylon, Kevin Nars team. This is Scott Vincent for birdie at three. And he is three under par for his round on Championship Sunday. And the Ironheads are in fourth place, just a shot behind Smash GC. A good bounce back by Scott, who carded a 75 yesterday. Charles Schwartzel at seven to extend that Stinger lead back to eight.
Kevin Na, uh, long range for a birdie on the ninth green. Got a good read from Adrian's putt. Looks like a bit of a strange stroke from Kevin there. Back to seven and Waco to extend the lead back to three shots. Yeah, I expected this putt to be half the distance. Left himself a lot more work than he needed. We actually haven't had a hello, Neiman, yet. So, hello, <laughs> Neiman. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, a much better piece of front running than we saw in Mexico, uh, where he was wobbly through the, the first uh, 14 or 15 holes. He really has looked uh, extremely tough today yeah he has, certainly has David they're gonna get there no once again Waco stays 15 under par the international series is underway for 2024 10 events Carlos Ortiz won the first one I remember Andy Ogletree by virtue of winning this last year got his spot in the live golf league he's a member of the high flyers this season so early stages in the international stage uh, series this year carlos ortiz leads the way on the live line adrian morong for birdie at nine Oh, yes. The live line don't lie. <laughs> no. <laughs> now Kevin Na is six, seven feet away for par at number nine. And yeah, that was a par for Adrian Moronk. Driven in the desert, chipped it up, made that great up and down. Now Kevin missed a short one previously. Bryson DeChambeau at 14. This for birdie. Now Bryson is out of the reckoning, you would think, individually, unless he goes bonkers low like a 58, which is unlikely today. But the Crushers are in contention for the podium. They're 23 under, and they're in fourth spot. Okay. how the eighth hole is playing today based on where the tee shots ended up three bogeys just two birdies slightly over par I saw John Rom put one in there really close at the closest of the day by that graphic and missed the putt Waco Neiman tees off at eight, right. flying the flag for Chile and a golfing statesman for South America. 15 under par, a lead of two at the moment over Louis Oosthuizen. Yeah, that was a seven iron. That's, he'll take where that finished. Well, the wind continues to pick up. It's going to be a massive factor. I mean, it's stronger than it's been all week already, but a good five, ten miles an hour. I think I got a signal for a six iron. Fantastic line. Brandon Grace at 11, coming up the rise. Oh, 
that was his second shot. Wow. Just grazes the edge of the hole. Charles Schwartzel on the tee at eight. Needs to get something going. Charles. Just a wonderful setup. I mean, how do you hit bad shots with that setup? Oh, he hasn't hit a bad one here. Or with that swing. He's hit a really good one. Yeah, it is. Arlo just warmed up the pipes when that one landed. <laughs> <laughs> I almost fell off my chair. Charles Howe the third for birdie at 13. Been a good week for Chucky three sticks, and he's got the Crushers into a tie for third place now. He is three under par for his round. The Crushers are 24 under, level with smash. Nine shots, correction, 11 shots behind our leader's stinger. John Rahm, downwind here on the 10th. He's going to want to have this ball end up a little more right, short right of the screen. This gives him a better angle into today's hole location, which is back left. Uh, interesting on our little scoring graphic, based on where the tee balls ended up, there's almost no difference whether you hit the fairway or hit it right or left, scoring-wise. But I think that's all predicated on the hole location, as you said, Sue Ann. Three at nine. Yeah, that's a that is Seven. in well he, he knows if that Seven. catches the right Seven. edge it goes in the water that's a beautiful shot and maybe a little accidental right of the flag look out for the crushers today Anuban Lahiri he's two under par on championship Sunday this is his second shot into the seventh Bryson DeChambeau's quartet our reigning champions are making their move on Championship Sunday. Here's Phil for birdie. And now live, still at the 11th, Brandon Grace. We saw his second shot a moment ago, and this is for par. Every shot, hugely significant in the team competition. In it goes. Brandon Grace stays at nine under par, and Stinger remains seven clear on 35 under. Absolutely the right club he's got in his hands for this shot. On the wind is buffeting the uh, effects microphones oh. out there. Is it as yeah. bad as it sounds? It is. It is. It's like I said. It's it's a good ten miles an hour stronger than it has been at any time this week. But at least it's in the same direction. So these guys are familiar with it. Well, the Fireballs took the team title the last time we were on the shores of the Red Sea. And that was as recently as October 2023. Eugenio Chacarra was a member of that team, and that is a quite wonderful second shot into the par four second hole. Carlos Ortiz for Torque. That's for birdie at 16 for Carlos, who aren't out of the mix. In terms of a podium finish, they're two shots back of third on 22 under. Kepka. Lengthy bunker shot at seven. Yeah, that sure was over the second bunker, long one, and beautifully played. <coughs> well, Jason Kokrak has made, missed two fairly short ones today, one tiny one on two. And he's made nothing. Trust your feet. To 
his caddy, David Robinson, by all accounts, is an incredible putter. And he reads the greens really well. Here's AK at the fifth hole. Hello, that's a little better. Smash are surging on Championship Sunday as they did last time out in Las Vegas to take the title. Brooks Kepka has another birdie for him. That's at six. He's three under for his round and smash 25 under. That's a tie with the Crushers for third place. Mm -hmm. Charles Hortzel. That'll work for Charles. Yeah, into a tie for third with Rom. Kevin, uh, second shot. Here on a 10th, popped up to layup, playing to his strength. Paid off in the last few holes, he missed a few putts. Eight and nine, he's been playing pretty solid other than those putts. Hole locations all the way back left. It's on a plateau. Can I throw it all the way back and spin it? Over at the 12th, Brandon Steele from distance. Up the hill, hard to get that one all the way there. Well, the high flyers are just in danger of slipping away. At the moment, they started the day 19 under. Their level par for Championship Sunday so far. They were fifth, they're now seventh. Well, take a look at the ninth hole. Difficult par four, 498 yards. Scoring average 4.11, and we see a lot of the players missing this fairway to the right, and it's kind of an awkward angle then alongside the water. The flag today on the back right. Uh, I almost feel it's an advantage for Joaquin to see someone hit a tee shot here before him, just to see how much this wind is going to take the ball from left to right and you look at where Schwartz was aiming I mean goodness me he's aiming left of that bunker which is left of the fairway almost in the desert I hope he doesn't thin it <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's not far off from where you're standing This could be really good. Uh, didn't get the big kick to the right it needed. John Rahm second at 10. He got a good look at Adrian's pitch and what that slope right there did to the ball. Oh, oh it didn't got to stay. That'll just make you go nuts right there. Yeah, he'll be horrified with that. Really a birdie hole. Marco, low screamer. No. Need a win. A little. Oh, no. uh, it needs a good kick. Yeah, that's pretty soft up there, and that one settled down. Up on the green, Louis Oosthuizen on the live line for birdie. And the ogle tree of the high flyers is on the tier three. He's one over for his round so far. Cameron Tringale is two over par. In fact, Phil is the only high flyer under par on Championship Sunday. What a shot there for Andy Ogletree. Here's Terrell Hatton on the par three eighth.
good shot. Before that, Bon, Bondito, calls himself when we play in Mexico. Honor Bon Lahiri. Beauty. Rom for birdie up the hill at 10. Hard to get that one to the hole, and uh, he's got four and a half, five feet for par. Anthony Kim taps in for a birdie at five. You can watch the remainder of his round on Live Golf Plus, AK Cam. His return when he teed it off on Friday. It was his first competitive golf shot for 4,320 days. Steen Burmester on Thank 13. Really nice. Right, Steen. Okay. at 10. It moved to his right. It's going to be slow, as you saw. Rom's putt. Mm. Brandon Grace out at 12. They went pretty much straight at it. Charles Hall the third, second at 14. Oh, what a beautiful shot from the right rough. Kevin now for birdie. Uh, he really wants to make this just for his confidence. His two short ones in a row. He should move to his right. Well, the uh, competitive juices will be flowing for Bryson DeChambeau, who may be out of it individually, but the crushers are surging there. Eight under par on Championship Sunday, and they've got themselves into solo third place now on 26 under. Uh, this is a big putt for John. He was not happy after that chip, and I don't think he fully composed himself over his first putt. in primo position to make a birdie on this hole. Now grinding for a part. Oh, that, the stench of that bogey will stay with him for a while. Oh my God. That's, uh, an ugly one right there. He really expected to make birdie. Drop shot for Legion 13 as well, whose advantage over the crushers in second place is down to a shot. Stinger, nine clear again. Normal. Once again, I think. Once again, I think it's a big help that Joaquim can see Schwartzel's shot first, see what the wind does to the ball, it, and more importantly, when it lands on the green, how it's going to bounce and roll. Similar lies too. Schwartzel's slightly better. He's going to be watching. Oh, that's 
a pretty good shot. If it catches the slope, if it, yeah, here, it I think it will. Excellent shot. That's a The Crushers gain another stroke. This is Charles Howe the third, who's having an excellent championship Sunday. He's four under for his round. That was for Birdie at 14. The Crushers are 28 under. Legion 13 are 28 under. They both trail Stinger by eight. Now Walker's ball looks like it's sitting down a bit, Dom. A little bit down compared to Schwarzel's, but he's got an eight iron. He just wants to hit exactly the same shot Schwarzel hit. Started at the left edge of the green. And it looks pretty identical. Pretty identical. Yeah, it's even better. Well, fathers and sons bonding through golf is a wonderful tradition. In this week's WTF, David Ferty shares one of the many tales passed down from his dad. People sometimes ask me where my keen sense of the absurd comes from, and I can trace it all the way back to when I used to caddy for my father, who played with the same three doctors every Saturday and Sunday morning. I was just about the age, you know, getting sophisticated enough to know what these men were talking about. And they would take the mickey out of each other like you wouldn't believe. And we were walking off that first tee with my dad's clubs, and my father turned to the doctor and he said, Doc, I'm having terrible trouble sleeping these days. I think you need to give me a sleeping pill. And the doctor said, well, Billy, you know, I don't like to do that right off the bat. You know, these things can be addictive. Have you tried everything? You know, like counting sheep, which is one of the things they do with sheep in Ireland. My father says, yes, I've tried everything. You need to give me a sleeping pill. And the doctor said, well, look, I'll tell you what you do tonight, Billy. When you put your head on the pillow, you know, imagine that you're out here on the first tee and uh, hit a shot here, a shot there, a bunker shot, a putter. And, and you know, you, by the time you get to the, the turn, you'll be asleep. So my father says, oh, all right, I'll give it a try. The next morning, Dr. Dignan turned to my dad and he said, Billy, how did you sleep last night? And my father says, no, not great, but I played very well. Dr. Dignan just said, oh, really? How did you go? And my father says, well, they had my tee shot, the first, a six iron on the front edge of the green, and I made the putt. Had a driver and a three wood just short of the second green, and I chipped in for eagle. I get on the third tee, I hit sky my tee shot, and it ends up halfway down the hill. I hit my second shot fat onto the front edge of the green, and I made the longest putt I've ever made in my life. And I'm thinking to myself, at nine or 10 years old here, my father's gonna break the course record. And the doctor said to him, what happened then? So, well, I get on the fourth tee, said my dad, and I sliced it into that big spinny of trees at the foot of the hill. My father said, well, I was awake all night looking for the ball. And that was the day I learned my father was funny, and I learned how to curse. <laughs> Have you considered stand-up comedy, David? <laughs> Casey, is 17 for the Crushers, and another birdie. The Crushers Hatton. in solo second. Yeah, this was Hatton for birdie at eight. And it is a battle for the podium positions, not necessarily for the lead yet in the team standings. The momentum at the moment is with the Crushers on 29 under par. They're only seven back now at Stinger. Crushers 11 under for the day. This is the green at nine. Schwartzel first. And he hit a fabulous shot. Yeah, he know. really did, Dom. He did, David. I mean, you, the wind is howling off the left. You've got the, the green on the right with the slope. You know it's going to go in the water if it catches that. You have to give it so much respect coming off the left. And they just judged it perfectly. And for Neiman to even hit it closer than him into a very birdieable position, it just shows you how much control he's got on the golf ball and on his mind right now. Coke crack hit a pretty good one too, right after the two of them. Well, this for back to back birdies. And Shah will be more than aware that 
every shot counts. He's three back of Wako Neiman on our individual pylon. Stinger leading the way, seeking victory in the team competition. All four scores count today. Over at the second, Cam Smith with his second shot. Oh, hello. Oh. <laughs> ah. We'll do it. You could sneeze that one into the hole. Louis, the second shot at 10. Rombo at 11 for a bounce back birdie after the frustrating, maddening bogey at 10, Suan. Oh, uh, he was not happy walking off the 10th. Green had some harsh words to himself. I spoke to his agent earlier and he said he only ever gets mad at himself. He is very hard on, on him and uh, has high expectations of his performance and I'm sure he walked off that one not happy. But we've seen that so much from John and he's bounced back, so what great players do. Still four back of that first win, albeit just third event. Neiman next at nine for birdie, Don. I was standing right behind behind Schwartzel's putt and it certainly was moving slightly from left to right. I had a good look at Joaquim's putt and I feel like it's right to left. It's a slightly different angle but it's from the same section of the green. When in doubt hit it straight I guess. They're all straight if you hit them hard enough Dom. <laughs> Our live line has it uh, well to the left of the hole for the initial starting point. Now that doesn't ne necessarily show if it might be a double breaker. That is the overall contour of the green. Seven inches left is the starting point. Louis wow. has a birdie putt at ten, but here's Waco for a three-stroke lead. And it did turn back left. Yeah. Nine to play on Championship Sunday. Championship Sunday is simmering nicely with nine to play here on the shores of the Red Sea. This is Royal Greens Golf and Country Club. This is Live Golf Jeddah. Your announced team, myself, Arlo White, Jerry Foltz, David Fairty in the booth, Don Boulay and Sue Ann Heng, our on course analysts. Uh, the weather, it's sunny. Shocker, 86 Fahrenheit, 30 Celsius, but the wind is getting up. Well, as ever on Championship Sunday, everybody, we've got a bit of a barn burner going on here. Uh, Wako Neiman playing superbly, but isn't secure as yet. Stinger have led the way. They led by 10 shots at one stage, but it's so volatile in the team competition. And Bryson DeChambeau's crushers are making their surge, looking for a second victory of the season. It's all to play for. Let's uh, take you out to the course. Uh, Su An Heng, your observation so far. Well, I highlighted the importance of John Rahm hitting the fairways to help with his performance outside 150 yards. Well, he's done just that. He's hitting every single fairway. He's only missed one green. He's hitting some great iron shots, but his short game just cost him an unforced error just then on the 10th hole, and he's missed some short putts as well. So if he can tidy those things on the back, he's going to force Waco to, to hold that lead going into the back nine. 
Wacom Neiman is looking calm and composed. Wacom Neiman is looking calm. So, Ed, how much uh, for guys to make a run out there, how much more difficult is it because of the wind up as strong as it is? Yeah, I mean, as Dom said, it is about 10 miles per hour stronger today. The good news is it's in the same direction that it's always been every single year that they've played out here. Uh, today's hole locations, too, are a little trickier. They're more tucked in the corners, some very uh, subtle slopes and difficult greens to read. Uh, it is difficult, man, out here. It's, it's tough. It's not easy. Plus, with the pressure on, it's, it's going to be an interesting back nine. Welcome Neiman is looking calm and composed and his ball striking is imperious. That five iron he hit on the sixth hole, I can't describe to you how brilliant it was. The way it bore through the wind and then turned in, turned right to left towards the pin. And I stood by that green on that sixth green and I asked his caddy, I said, he's just a different player this year, isn't he? And he goes, he is a completely different player. He is definitely one of the best players in the world. Look, nine holes left to play. There's some tough holes in this win. 12 to 16 are going to be pivotal. You have the opportunity to make birdies on 17 and 18. So hopefully he can get through those holes in even par and then maybe birdie one of the last two and he could be secure. Dom, he looks like a different player even than when he uh, won in Mexico. Yeah. He's had a number of shots out there today where it's only a two-shot lead. That's nothing, as you know, um, where uh, the five iron that you talked about, the shot that he just hit into the ninth green was magnificent. So, I mean, he looks really composed and... Uh, definitely looks like he's got a chance to even strengthen that lead. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if he stretches his lead, but David, yeah, I mean, the golf course helps here too. Maya Cobra, as you know, you know, you kind of swing with the handbrake on because yeah. every missed shot, it's a lost ball. You've got to take a drop from the penalty area here. Not so much the case. So perhaps that helps. That helps him loosen up and let him sort of release the club a little bit better. Neiman highlights right here. Suan or Dom was talking about just how solid he is. This his second shot at the opening hole to get off to that hot start David mentioned earlier that was going to make it really tough for him to be caught. Then the save at number three. Those can be the difference maker, Dave. Yeah, for sure. Two great shots into the fourth green. Just misses with that one. Tap in birdie. And in order to get it done today, basically he has to do what he needs to do, but he's got some great pursuers, David. And Sue Ann Brom being obviously the most imposing one of them in terms of the name and the stature of the player. The frustration that he showed walking off 10, we've seen out of him before. How quickly is he able to shake it off and refocus on the task at hand? Well, I just, uh, as you guys were talking to Dom, and uh, Ram just walked off the 12th tee with some fruity language, so I'm not too sure where that <laughs> went. Uh, but, you know, look, we've seen Ram and his frustration and his temperament. We've seen all that. We're very familiar with it. And it's only, in some ways, it's worked well for him in the past. So, you know, I think a great player and a player of his stature, as you said, will be able to compose himself. I saw him take a couple of deep breaths. I saw him trying to, you know, regather his thoughts and really focus because he's still not out of it. He saw that leaderboard on the 10th green, so he knows where he is at. Plenty of holes left, and these holes, you got to be really patient. Well, let's get to one or two uh, John Rahm highlights here because Legion 13 are also in the mix for the team title. They're in third place at the moment, 28 under par, seven back of Stinger. This was Rahm's tee shot at three. Yeah, really tough hole the third today, and that was magnificent in flag high, about six feet left. His second shot at seven. That would be birdie. Hello, chaps. Thought I'd join you by the desk here. As nice we, uh, stroll you took over here. Yeah, Appreciate it. yeah. Um, no one's mentioning Louis Eustazen at the moment. He's only two shots back, oh, and he's playing I, beautifully. I, I did earlier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can you see him making a charge in the closing holes here, David? Yeah, absolutely. I think he's, uh, you know, the favourite maybe to you know, put a little pressure on Neiman. Uh, with Ram not playing with Joaquin Neiman, I mean, he would love to be in that group, yeah. you know, to try to, you know, exert some pressure on him. But, uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think Louis is the one who's most likely to. 
you know, get near him. Well, well he is the captain of Team Stinger, of course, who extended their overnight lead of seven to ten at one stage, but it's now been clawed back to six. But they are, as a group, as a quartet, playing very well. This is Louis' second shot into two. They're looking for a first team victory since early last season in Tulsa, where they edged the four aces. Dean Burmester is playing very well today. He's one under par. That was for birdie at seven. Brandon Grace got things started yesterday with an eagle after chipping in. That was his second shot into ten. He almost repeated it. And then Charles Schwartzel off the tee at eight. Remember, he won our inaugural event in London way back when. Well, it wasn't that long ago. And Stinger won the inaugural team event as well. They've always been there or thereabouts. They are so competitive as four very personable South Africans, but they have that competitive spirit. Louis leading the way for them in the individual competition, 13 under, Schwartzel still in it, and Brandon Grace and Dean Burmester know they have a job to do here. And uh, Stinger fans watching across the globe. Louis Eustazen is playing some golf, playing some golf these last few months, and he's on fire this week. Alfred Dunhill champion before Christmas, Mauritius Open champion as well, second in Oman last week to Carlos Ortiz and doing well here. And Louis has reached the tee at 11. Another good swing there, right at it. Neiman now on the tee at 10, and he can get it really close to this green, maybe even on it. Yeah, it's a great tee shot. Well, John Ram drove it into the bunker on 12 and came up short with his second shot. Yeah, David, it's a very similar type of shot he had on the 10th. Lie is different, obviously. But in terms of length and type of shot needed, wind direction, etc., etc., very similar. Definitely wants to execute it better. You know, Adam Hayes, his caddy, told me. When he plays bad, he doesn't go to the range and he doesn't spend any time on the practice driving range or practice green. He goes straight home. He doesn't believe that he's going to get much out of practicing, cramming it in. Does all the work way beforehand, gets all the reps in, just focuses on resting. That's interesting, actually. There's not a lot of, I mean, the great players you don't find practicing a lot on Wednesday afternoon. I had, uh, I remember Greg Norman told me that once, believe it or not, years and years ago. I was playing in a tournament, the, the old New Orleans tour stop, believe it or not. And uh, and it's all the guys trying to find it that are out there in the on the practice yeah. tee after, uh, after a practice round. But most guys do hit a few balls after their rounds during competition. This Sebastian Munoz for Torque for birdie at seven to see if they can start climbing for a podium position. Danny Lee, a winner just about a year ago for the Ironheads. He won in Tucson. That's for Eagle at number four, using the flag stick and rattling it home. Now out to Charles Schwartzel in the rough at 10. And I just don't see how you can get this close. Yeah. Downhill lie with that. Yeah. No room to work with. Wind off the left and helping. Yeah, not helping at all, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, it's, not, it's yeah. really hurting him, actually. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, he's got to land it in the absolute perfect spot. In the rough on the bank of the bunker. That's going to catch the slope. It was a good effort. Yeah. How much he could do from there. You know, guys, when you're practicing late on a Wednesday night before a tournament, 
It's called panic time. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was trying to dance around that, Dom, but thanks. <laughs> I've been there many times. <laughs> Neiman next. Well, he hits these low with spin with an open club face. He needs to do that here. It's going to kick to the right. Needs to get it on that level, top level. Oh, oh. A little unlucky. Anthony Kim, this was just a few seconds ago, and he had this for birdie at number six. You know, the remarkable thing, now that's four feet past, but the remarkable thing to me is how good his touch has been around the greens, Anthony Kim. Yeah. For, I mean, that usually goes away in a matter of weeks or maybe months, but he's got it pretty solid. This was Paul Casey for Eagle. Yeah, huge tee shot there. But he makes that, taps that in for birdie. That was a little earlier to get the crushers to within five. They're 12 under par today. It's pretty good. Sting of the leaders by five are only six under par for the day. So the crushers are surging on Championship Sunday, seeking a second title of the season already. Coach Bob Torrance. We'll get back to that. Hold that thought, David. Stinger are back to 34 under. The gap is now just four. This is far from done. Louis, though, can re establish that five stroke lead with this birdie opportunity at 11. It would also get into within one of Waco Neiman. Pulled it. You will let us know if, if the whiff of any kind of playoff uh, I will, enters I will. the yes, fair. As soon nostrils. as I get the, the, uh, the stand through it. <laughs> Schwartzel on the 10th. Yeah. Anthony Kim, just off the green at seven. This is his third shot. John Rahm. Big putt for a par. It's going to be slow. He's putting into the wind and uphill. A bogeys in three for a very frustrated John Rahm. Taylor Gooch for birdie at 13. Smash currently in third place. Legion 13 have dropped off the podium as it stands. Taylor Gooch playing beautifully. Brooks Kepka's three under par. They're four under for the day. And Neiman now at 10. To stretch this lead to three once more. Yeah, and how quickly things can change. I'm standing on the 10th green here, and I saw Louis miss that putt on 11 to reduce it to one. Very shortly, it could be, like you say, David, back to three. He's had two or three of this length. Made a good one for par from this length on two. Wacko oh. Neiman is turning the screw on Championship Sunday. What a performance by the Chilean. He's 16 under par now. He leads by three with eight to play. Not being in the majors motivated me a lot to get better, says Waco Neiman.
now then, can Louis Oosthuizen respond for both himself and for Stinger, who have seen their lead slashed to four strokes? Almost out of nowhere, despite Waco Neiman's efforts, Todd K are in a tie for third. Twenty six under par, that was Mito Pereira for birdie at three. Schwartz will make his par at ten. Over on eight, Anthony Kim with his tee shot at the par three. Likes it. Yeah. That was just a moment ago. Next to play, this is live Ian Poulter. The Majestics lagging in 13th place. They are six over par today alone. Lee Westwood is four over for his round. Ian Poulter is level par today. But the Majestics with an awful lot of work to do in the closing stages to climb up the team pylon. A team without a podium finish in their last 18 events since Boston way back in 2022. Let's just go where the, where the tower is. Yeah. Left of the, the tower. tower. You, you say, say, say that tower. microphone? No, left. That's okay. a speaker okay. down okay. there. Okay, so, so, so more left of that. Thing, if it's that, there, it's... That's what I'm saying. Yeah. If, we, if we go to that microphone, yeah. we'd rather go at the pin. Yeah, exactly. So where is the head where the guy is going to yeah, walk? Yeah, he's going to walk right, right now. now. No. Yeah. Right there. I mean, that's, uh, that, that's I mean, fine. You think that's a good line there? Yeah. yeah. For, for, for you, say, to pitch here. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's 22. Oh, I think I can still throw pitch, it. Pitch it to the high. hole. Okay, so, so it's 140. I'll say 140. High on line to that thing. 140 is total. 140 is total. And the wind is straight in it. I mean, if anything, it's probably a touch out of your left, ever so slightly. Well, no, no, no. If, you, if, you, if you're trying to hit it there, then it's a flight at 9 iron. Yeah. If you're trying to hit it there. 40 is total. Okay. 40 is yeah. total. I mean, if you, you know. You, we, we can't eat. be going at the flagstick then. No. So we just go at the pump tree there and straight shot. Solid. With the wind is straight in out there. Solid. Maybe a touch out of your left, ever so slightly. I think this gets there. To, yeah. to, the, to the 38, 40? Yeah. 40. I mean, listen, it's playing, you know, flighted, it's playing 55. Okay. So, right. yep. You like that, right? I mean, you like that play? I, I like exactly what you're thinking. Okay. It's only 140 yards total. Tees up. He's not even looking at the pin. Neither he or his caddy. There's a microphone 25 feet left of the pin. Touch on. Touch on. It's almost straight in. If anything, a touch out of your left. It's almost straight in. Are you happy? A lot of wind right now. Uh, I hear you. I hear you. I mean, it's. There's no problem to be a little. And then you don't have to fly to it with the aid. Eight, 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 coming like this. We've been hitting here before. I mean, we hit an eight iron the other day. When one. Yeah, we'll, we'll back off that tee. This is the front tee. Yes. Yeah. Yesterday, what, yesterday it went 150. The, the other days it's been 150. It's blowing stronger today. We got a picture more for you. It's worth an eight. Now, 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 are you still going with your line? It can finish on the on the on the on the speaker, maybe just left of that, okay. and it and and it flighted 155. 155. Uh, not, not, not 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 flighted with this club. Yeah, like a low one. Yeah, it doesn't one, have to be. 155. So yeah. should get to 140. Exactly. Okay. Okay. I like this change of club because short, and he pushes it slightly. He's off the front edge of the green better off being slightly long on this hole. Only one birdie on this hole today at 140 yards, though. 
Yeah, lots of bogeys, I bet, too. Yeah. Well, that needs down, to sit down, a little. Down. Well, Waco Neiman is attempting to close out a dominant victory here in Jeddah. He leads by three on Championship Sunday. Can Stinger be caught? Their lead is down to four. Yeah. Charles Schwartzel next. Oh, uh, eight iron also for Schwartzel. Does he take a more aggressive line? He certainly has. Still left. Looks good. The Crushers are by far the best performers so far on Championship Sunday, and they're giving it a real run for the title here in Jeddah. That was Bryson DeChambeau, his second shot at eight, and he enjoyed that. Anavan Lahiri, his second shot into the seventh. Look at them collectively as a quartet. They are 12 under par today. Stinger, who came into the final day with a seven stroke advantage, they're only five under today. So the gap is narrowing. That's Charles Howell the third for birdie at 13 and Paul Casey for birdie at 17. So the Crushers are 30 under par. Lots of golf to be played. They're four behind Stinger. Who says it at 12? Yeah, Babalo is weak just in that first cut. He's got seven iron. Ah. Wind is howling. Taylor Gooch, his second shot at 14. Smash GC, victorious in Las Vegas a couple of weeks ago after a sensational final day performance where they are in a tie for third place having started the day in second. That's with Torque on 26 under par. Lucas Herbert at 12. 12 hole as well. Oh, goodness, that could have been so much better. A couple yards shorter catching the slope. But Twelfth only had one birdie all day as well. Anthony Kim reeling off a couple birdies thus far today. This for another. Ah, I was just talking about how great his touch has been all week for a guy who's taken a layoff. That wasn't his best. Cam Smith is on the fourth. For Eagle from way out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's what he does best. And I think that reaction sort of betrays a slight level of frustration with his performance so far here in Jeddah. Overall, Cam Smith is two under par. Look at that graphic on the bottom right of your screens and the team scores for today. Stinger, they started beautifully, extended their overnight lead of seven to 10 in no time. The Crushers began the day today, 11 back of Stinger. They're 12 under par today, the gap is only four, but who's gonna take the individual title? Waco Neiman, a three stroke lead and a long birdie chance here at 11.
And this wind, with the slope he has to deal with, this requires extreme touch. But his routine remains unchanged. That's a good sign. That is way more than he bargained for. John Rahm at 13 playing his seconds. Yet again, just a matter of inches from being half the distance closer. Dustin Johnson birdie two to get to four under par, and here he is teeing off at three. DJ's round and tournament will end at the eighth. Pereira for birdie at four. That'll help Torque. And they nudge ahead of Smash. But for how long? Not long. The Smash have got it to 27 under par. So that's a tie with Torque at the moment for third place. Bryson DeChambeau, this is live for Eagle. You can see the crushers are now 31 under. The gap is only three. If Bryson drains this, it'll be one shot. It was 10 shots not so long ago, and it's got a chance and it's in. <laughs> Bryson DeChambeau leading from the front yet again. The crushers are 33 under par. 15 under for Championship Sunday so far, and they are hot on the tails of Stinger. The gap is now one. Back-to-back -back birdies for Taylor Gooch. That was at 14. That got smash into that uh, tie with Torque for third place. Crushers are eight strokes better than the next best today on Championship Sunday. When it matters, when all four scores count, where there is nowhere to hide. I mean, I, I could have never played a cup. Yeah. I mean, I don't think I shoved it too much. It just, nah, I mean, broke. I saw it just outside, but I, I would have never seen two cups. And this is a massive moment for Waco Neiman. Yeah, these are pivotal moments. Can't be too positive with this one because it's howling downwind behind him. And this green is perhaps the highest point on the golf course, too. Waco has hold some clutch par putts in this tournament so far and there was another one to maintain a three-stroke lead over Louis Oosthuizen. Yeah. Yeah. Well played. Crazy how he, I don't know, like, yeah. was trying to give back but... John Rahm for a much-needed birdie at 13. Yeah, dead weight that would have caught the right edge and fallen in. It's not been that kind of a day for John. Kieran Vincent for Eagle at 18. This would get Legion 13 into a tie for third. That was a few moments ago. So, smash, Legion 13, Torque. All three of them tied on 27 under for third place. There's Graham McDowell at six. This to keep smash on 27 under. Yes.
The tee at 11 and Anaban Lahiri. And you're going to be seeing a lot of the crushers between now and the end of Championship Sunday. Lahiri is five under par today. DeChambeau is five under. Charles Howell the third is four under. Paul Casey one under. This is why the crushers are the reigning Live Golf League team champions. Anaban himself is 10 under par. Drift all the way down. You heard the distant groan. We are live on the tier 12, and here's Charles Schwartzel, who has birded this hole in his two previous rounds. Before that, Wako Neiman, who hold a clutch putt to save par on 11 to maintain his three-stroke lead. Another great tee shot. Yeah. Oh, the signature hole here at Royal Greens Golf and Country Club is the 16th, the par three, along the shores of the turquoise Red Sea. aware of the situation they were so comfortable early on they led by 10 it was a breeze and that's before the crushers caught fire help if anything Trangali first to tee off the high flyers are only one under par today so they've slumped down to seventh place began the day with high hopes of a first podium finish since 2022 those hopes haven't been extinguished yet. Take a look at the skittles from, as you said, the signature holes. Nearly an ace by somebody there. Five birdies today. And whilst we wait, DJ for birdie at three. Mm, that's a rare one at the third. At 11. Hatton on the tee. Mm, beauty. Back with Cameron Tringale. Might be time to remind everybody that we are yet to have a team playoff. Yes. In live golf history, which is a Jerry statistical anomaly. It is. It is. I'm not the greatest statistician in the world, but I, I, I did pay a little bit of attention in that class in college. And <laughs> we're overdue. That's Louis Oosthuizen off the 13th tee. Second shot at the 11th for Anaban, a disappointing tee shot. Arlo, you keep talking about how quickly the team score can change. As you know, I just stepped out of here for what, three or four minutes. I come back in, I need the highlights. <laughs> it's down to one shot. It's one shot. Bryson's eagle at 18. Close the gap to one. I did see that right behind us. Honorbon, the latest victim for the Fairway to Heaven podcast, starring <laughs> Sue Ann Hang, and me as her sidekick. Very insightful guy. Very, very big, very high intellect on Honorbon. Yeah. 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 That was a, a decent shot, but this one.
could be even better. Paul Casey. <laughs> well, that is a near certain birdie for Paul Casey, and that would tie it up at 34 under par. What an incredible championship Sunday in the team competition. Well, Jason Kokrak here on the 12th hit a pretty good drive. Seven's going to struggle. No, I think seven's plenty. Seven's plenty. Should be more off the left here. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's it's off the left and hurting, but I yeah. mean, seven's plenty. Okay. Yeah, he's in a seven iron. Joachim Neiman is 64 yards past him. <laughs> I mean, I don't think anyone's been up anywhere near where he's just hit his tee shot. It is insane. He's going to have a of, of 60 or 56. Jason's hitting six, uh, seven iron. Some Pretty good one. Adrenaline involved, I suspect, oh, Dom. Oh, David, well, I mean, I know he's picked up some speed. This is Bryson's speed. Schwarz or next. Fending guy. Can I lay? Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately for Charles, he hit that bank. That's the bank that uh, Joaquin cleared comfortably. Don't want to have an uphill lie into this wind. He's got to have to hook this down, kind of lean into it just to keep it down as much as possible. Smasher hanging in there. Victorious in Las Vegas two weeks ago. They're 28 under Brooks Kepka. He's four under today. That was a birdie two at 11. And they're in a tie once more with Todd K for well, third. Well, uh, if you feel like you can get it in a little lower, no. I feel like you're not going to go lower, but then it's, it's going to count. Like... Yeah. Well, yeah, how far do you think I got to hit it to pitch a 104? Go to 110, 111? Well, I, I, I'm, I'm saying 111. It could be even a little more, no? Maybe just a touch more. Okay. Maybe just a little bit more. I mean, just you have a number in my head. How far do you think is the max that I could pitch it? Well, you could pitch it another five past. So that's, so that's 109. Four. That's probably playing 117. Okay. Huh? All right. We're trying to pitch it at the hole, one, one 104. Past, 104, which is playing 111. One, 111. 112. All right. Okay. Well, just got to be careful about the spin here. A full sand wedge into the breeze. Up the hill. No, we got to be. Don't there. spin. Don't spin too much. Don't spin. Stay there. Stay there. Yeah, it was always going to work away from the hole. Just let it drift a touch to the right there. Torque got to 28 under par after Mito Pereira's birdie at five. And the Crushers are reigning team champions for a reason. The band of Bryson-led brothers are level now with Stinger on 34 under par. They started the day 11 shots back. Paul Casey has just completed his birdie at two. Anthony Kim rattling the flagstick might have actually caught the back of the cup and dropped without it, but it was going pretty well. Oh, Stinger need to respond here, and that's perhaps not what Louis Oosthuizen wanted, and it certainly isn't. And maybe that clutch par putt a few moments ago for Waco Neiman could be the pivotal moment. Now then. Bryson. He's nine under for the competition. But in the context of the team 
tournament here in Jeddah. He's five under for his round. The Crushers are 16 under. This for birdie at one to quite incredibly give the Crushers a one-stroke lead. Stinger in the early running on Championship Sunday led by 10, and they were going away at that point. Bryson, fresh from an eagle. And it's in! And he knows. The Crushers have come from absolutely nowhere to lead Stinger by a shot. This is quite stunning from Bryson's team on Championship Sunday. That was the eagle at 18 for Bryson DeChambeau. They regard themselves as a band of brothers, the reigning Live Golf League champions. Paul Casey, his second shot into the second. That was the birdie that tied it up at 34 under. But the lead hasn't lasted long. This is Charles Schwartzel at 12. Oh! Wow, anything you can do, we're going to match. 35 under par, it's going all the way between the Crushers and Stinger GC. It's also a battle royale for the final place on the podium. All four scores counting, that's how volatile Championship Sunday is. This is terrific entertainment. Paul Casey, three under his last four. Honor Bon Lahiri, three under his last five. Bryson, three under his last two, all for Crushers. That makes up ground in a hurry. Sebastian Munoz for birdie at 10. And that gets Todd Kay into solo third on 29 under. That's one ahead of Smash. It's two ahead of John Rahm's at Legion 13. Oh, fine shot from the rough there. Oh. Louis now from the sand. Yeah, that ball sitting in a groove, ball below his feet. It was not his best iron shot from the fairway, only had an eight iron. Well, if you love top level sport, don't go anywhere. And Louis knows Stinger needs to start all over again. This is uh, Brandon Grace for par at 15. Oh dear. No sooner had Charles Schwartzel got them back level with Crushers, they drop a shot, and the Crushers now lead by one. It's easy to miss those in this kind of weather with the wind whipping around your ankles. You, know, you don't, feel, you never feel like you get comfortable sometimes, Jerry, over those, you know, two, three, four footers, and it, you can make a mistake. And a lot of times you look down at the ball and it's not really oscillating, but there's yeah. a little tiny flicker in it. And yeah. And as you've said many times, at ground level, with the wind this strong, it will move the golf ball while in motion. Done. You mentioned the the surging crushers, Jerry. In contrast, Stinger, Louis Eustace in his level par over his last five holes. Schwartz all two under over five, but over his last nine holes, Dean Burmester is one over, and through his last 11 holes, Brandon Grace is three over. Mm. <laughs> and that's left them vulnerable. Our reigning individual Live League champion is Taylor Gooch. He's nine under par for the tournament. 
and Smash GC are one stroke behind Torque for a place on the podium, and he's reached the 16th tee, the par three. Bad as it gets, he says. He was trying to draw. You could see his arms trying to recover that impact, trying to turn it over, and that's just so hard to do against that wind with that whole location. Schwarzel on the 13th tee. Blew it way left in the desert yesterday. Looks like he's trying to hit a cut into the wind. Against the wind. That's coming from right to left. That's exactly what he's done. Beautiful tee shot. It's going to cost him a few yards hitting that shot up against the wind, but safety first. This is Charles Howe III at 18 for birdie to extend the Crusher's lead. They appear unstoppable. That one just slides by. The lead remains one over Stinger GC. Crusher's collectively 17 under par today. Three extremely demanding tee shots left in his round. This, the 15th, and of course the 16th. Looks like he's trying to go the other way from Schwarzel. Oh, well, this has got to sit. It could be desert. Mm. Well, that doesn't look like a terrific lie. Up on the green, Lucas Herbert for birdie. Correction, par putt. Started the day on nine under par, Lucas Herbert. And he's four over now on Championship Sunday. Well, can John Rahm drain a birdie putt? Oh, that was a few moments ago, and another chance slips by. All right. This is a big putt for a par. Not sure if he's seen the team leaderboard and the huge change that has happened in the last few holes. This will certainly help Stinger GC not fall back any further from crushes. And to keep him three shots back from Marco Neiman. Putted so well yesterday, 27 putts. Left to right. At the moment, this is something of a collapse by Louis Oosthuizen Stingers. They're back to 33 under. The Crushers in control now. They lead by two. Louis falls four back of Waco Neiman. This is Wade Ormsby playing out of 10. He started the week as one of the three reserves on site. Matthew Wolf had to withdraw during round two due to illness. Yeah. Uh, that meant his, obviously, the other three scores for the day were the counting scores for that day, but you need a reserve to play on the team when all four scores count. Of those three reserves, the captains then rank them at the beginning of the week who they would want to fill in if a need arise, arises, and this is who Bubba had picked first for the range goats. He's playing solely to try and help the range goats play. And now over at 16, Taylor Gooch has missed the green right where the players walk off through that overseeded rye grass. And that just makes this shot considerably more difficult.
getting back to the reserves really quick, David, because a few fans asked uh, for an explanation earlier. Uh, if there were a WD in the final round with all four scores counting, one of the remaining two reserves would be, well, they, they stay loose, they stay warm, they stay ready to go if need be, and they'd be shuttled out to that position to resume the round for the injured or sick player. Yeah. Paul Casey on the third green. A little, little work left there. Abe Ansar on the tee at 14th. He's not having his best day. So they can tell by his body language, just following the last couple of holes. He's not very happy with his ball striking. Wicked bounce off the edge of the fairway on the right like side, end up there. Yeah, like it will be the angle straight to cross. Yeah. 75, 75? Yeah, that's what you're Yeah. Well, hold, eh? Perfect, 79. Yeah, that's what you're Okay. Metal green. Yeah, but I can't long Yeah, metal green. You're right, Jerry. It's knocked a good 20, 30 yards off that tee shot, hitting the cut into the wind. But at least he's playing from the short grass. Yeah. Got him at 190 all the way home, Dom. Is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah, from that distance in this wind, he's just got to be conservative here. Can't imagine he's going to go at this pin. Paul Casey, a tester here for par at three to maintain the two shot lead for Crushers, and he didn't like it immediately. So the lead down to just one, but his captain is Bryson DeChambeau, who's playing beautifully on Championship Sunday. This is his second shot at two. Decent. Yeah, <laughs> Bryson on fire. GMAC having something to say for Smash to bring them up to a tie for third. Yeah. GMAC two under par today. But so. this is Gooch for par to stay in that tie for third place. Look at the discrepancy in the championship Sunday team scores today. We saw Smash last time out in Vegas go 10 under par in the final round when the rest of the field was 66 oh. over. That's excellent from Taylor Gooch. That from a chewy lie to the right of the green, that's an excellent three. AK for birdie at 10. Now, Joaquin Neiman, we got the overhead view, Dom. You got had the close-up view. What are we looking at here, lie-wise? Uh, it's, it's like being in a bunker. It's not terrible, but it's quite soft underneath. But it's on an uphill lie with the wind strong into his face. Water to the right. I don't know what he's thinking here. He, he's just going to make solid contact with a six iron. And understandably, he's left. Does it clear the bunker? Uh, it looks like he tried to cut that up. Uh off that lie so much easier than a draw and with the water on the right it's well an understandable miss this season got off to a roaring start in mayacoba mexico 54 holes that weren't enough to complete the task as sergio garcia 
and this man, Waco Neiman, thrilled us long after the sunset. I was feeling confident, I was feeling good on the golf course. Just wanted to go out there and enjoy my Yakoa because I know it's a tricky course. Waco Neiman has an opportunity to tie the lead and he takes it. I was feeling great. Let's get out to the 11th and Waco Neiman. He catches the ball in the middle. Oh, nice. That hole, I think, gave me more of an attitude to keep going. He's now nine under. Yeah, I keep swinging free. Look at the look in that man's eyes right there. Total focus, Tom. He's 12 under the half. Today, I mean, it's got to be Joaquin, right? Possibly another round in the 50s. 59 for the Chilean. Oh, the big beaming smile. 59? Yeah! Did not see that happening, let's just say that. Waco Neiman with that scintillating 59 on Friday. He went to sleep last night thinking he had a four-shot lead. That lead is only two. Well, he took an incorrect drop from an obstruction. And they showed me the video and it was like, yeah, it was, it was clear and I, yeah, I mean, it was a mistake. He has, you know, the time to settle himself, Don. Yeah. He'll yeah. be fired up. To think about it that I just gotta go out there and fight and grind and I knew it was gonna be a long day. <laughs> That's a great response from Waco Neiman because the pressure must be so intense on the young man right now. I'm still in a good position. I still can win the tournament. I mean, the roller coaster of emotion that he's experienced over the past three days. Yeah. We went to a playoff with Sergio. Waco Neiman to win. And since I was reading my putter, I knew I had to make that putt. I knew I had to make this putt. A stunning show of character from Waco. <laughs> and he wins his first live golf title in the most dramatic circumstances possible. And here is Waco Neiman at 13 with that three stroke advantage. That has come up a good way short. And he will try to get the grit uh, off the sweat on his face. Well, Anna Ban Lahiri in the team competition. This was for par at 12. So momentarily, the Crushers slipped back to 33 under and a tie for first with Stinger. But Captain Fantastic Bryson Woo! DeChambeau, who is 11 under par, has re-established the lead. And Bryson is six under par over his last seven holes. And this is a par putt at 17, a bogey putt, excuse me, for Dean Burmester. And he won't be seeing that ball again. And the Crushers lead by two. And you know DeChambeau, the way his mind works, well, nobody really knows, but he has done the math in his head. He knows if he can get past, if he somehow gets a birdie at the par 3-3 three, three, and then a chance for Eagle at his final hole number four, that would get him into what would currently be second place. And, and he, in his mind, he probably still thinks he has a chance to win this, David. Yeah. Yeah. That's Schwartzel from long, long range. Six holes to go. Take another look at uh, Neiman's bunker shot here. This was not a particularly difficult one by these guys' standards, and he just got a little too much sand. Louis Ustays in his second shot at 14. Stingers might be uh, crying into their packets of biltong later on if they don't get themselves <laughs> together. Hello. Oh. Good effort there from Kokrak. Kokrak's the only player currently in the top ten over par for the final round. We 
we've seen a few good ones on this hole today. We've seen a lot of bad ones because it's a brutally difficult hole, but you get it over the hill, it'll feed toward the hole. Oh. It works by the skin of its teeth. H perfection. Uh, Crusher's GC on an absolute tear at the moment. Captain Bryson is on fire for the final round. Going to be a nail-biting finish at this rate. Yes, it is. Now, to preserve his lead, Marco Neiman. Turns a little uphill at the end, enough to slow it down. Only a second bogey of the week for Wago Neiman. Eagle put for Carlos Ortiz. He made birdie. Wago drops a shot. That was completely different than what we. Told K 28 under par, smash 29 under par in that race for third. Well, I say third, they could yet win it. Yeah. <laughs> Brandon Grace at 17. No, it's not. Finishing on two, 17, 18, 1, and 2 are all what the players consider birdie holes. That could help his team. It's okay, 29 under, a tie for third with Smash. Now, Charles Schwartzel for part of 13. He is just two back. He stays two back, and so do Stinger GC. Mito Pereira, second shot at seven. Torque a nine under par, one of the better performers so far on Championship Sunday. That is an excellent chance of another birdie to go to solo third place. Can Taylor Gooch respond for smash? Second at 17. The answer is in the affirmative. I just spoke to his caddy, nicknamed Dutchie. I said, is he aware of what's happening with Stinger? He goes, oh yeah. And there's a leaderboard right behind us and I think he just saw Walker drop a shot. Um, he knows that is costly. What a chance for Louis. Yeah. 17 and Sir Philip. He's the only high flyer under par today as they've slipped down the pylon on Championship Sunday. Not about Lahiri at 13 with his second shot. He's four under par today. At 14, Charlotte Schwartzel. He's only two back of Waco Neiman. Stinger had that 10 shot lead in the team competition early on on Championship Sunday. They might yet face a battle to finish on the podium. Good price to do the improbable again here at three. Just a 
Little Ridge on the green as he waits for one of his fellow competitors to putt. That'll throw that to the right, and then it runs away from, so it's pretty quick on down to the hole. <laughs> well, big moments these for Waco Neiman. A first bogey of the day, only a second of the week at 13. His lead is down to two with five to play. And here he is teeing off at 14. With the drone tracer. Looks absolutely ideal. Bryson ready at the third. You probably take that after that tee shot. Risky. Well, were it not for Bryson 73 yesterday to state the obvious, <laughs> he'd be right in contention because he carded a 63 on the opening day and he's seven under par for his round today. Brandon Grace for birdie, a much needed birdie for Stinger at 17. No. Mito Pereira has got Torque into solo third on 30 under par. They're only four back of the Crushers. They're 10 under par for Championship Sunday. The Crushers are 16 under today. And to put it into context, the overnight leaders by seven. Stinger GC only three under today so far. John Rahm, five back. And with this wind having kicked up throughout the day, it's still blowing hard. He's going to start this over the sea. Oh, yeah, it's a fine shot. One of the best we've seen. Will Walco Neiman hang on? He leads by two. Will the Crushers seal the deal? They lead the Stingers by two shots. Louis on the tee at 15. Straight into the wind, slightly off the right. No longer wearing that knee brace that he had on yesterday. I said he's feeling better. He's a little worried about the tan lines, though. <laughs> Apparently, uh, heard it just one day. Got out of the plane and didn't feel right. That was a good tee shot. Straight in. Let's get you caught up with some of the other action around the golf course. Bubba Watson had a, a poor opening day with a 74, but a 66 yesterday. That was for his birdie at eight for the Range Goats. 62 on the opening day for Adrian Moronk, the reigning DP World Tour Player of the Year. That was for birdie at 15. His challenge failed to materialize over the weekend. Oh, Casey for Eagle at four for Crushers. was earlier that birdie will get them three clear of stinger now taylor gooch to tie for third place on 30 under par for smash with torque To the 14th and Jason Kokrak. Yeah, and the ball is sitting down almost in an old divot. Ah. Dig deep on that one and it's it's got the win, it's riding it hard left. Yeah, he actually got the club caught a, a little on the backswing there, kind of stuck in the grass on him. And...
Charles Schwartz is pumped up. His tee shot only a couple of yards short of Joaquin's, but that's not a good one. Now Neiman. Oh, it's a pretty good pin. You happy? Yes. Straight in. Pitching wedge. Still got to flight it. Can't let it balloon like Schwartzel's. He can land it past the pin. It will spin back. That's a little left too. Well, we've been talking about it during the broadcast. The Live Golf League players competed all over the world this off-season, picking up important wins across the globe. When was the last time you had one appointment? A few weeks ago. <laughs> Let's call it a month. I won the Daniel Championship in Epic Creek and the Mauritian Open at La Reserve Golf Links. I had a few more tournaments than I thought, but it was good off season. I mean, obviously, my goal was to get into the into the Open. I uh, being outside the world ranking, I knew Australia was giving a spot for for the Open. This is really going to make their presence felt this weekend. You know, I played practice around with Shaw before the Joburg Open, and obviously, you know, won that event, and then the next week, you know, won again. <laughs> being able to get a gold medal in Chile for the Pan American Games, playing against some of my great buddies, like. Nima and Munoz and Mito, Carlos was there as my, my, my teammate. It was really cool. This is a world-class display of talent and poise. I was a little bit lucky to win two in a row, but it was super fun. And then, you know, Louis flew all the way from America to come and make sure I didn't win three in a row. <laughs> Being in that position in Australia and ended up winning, it was a great way to end the year. Everywhere they go, they win. There's the Aussie Open champion, Waco Neiman, with the uh, trophy there. Uh, Dean Burmester, the Joburg Open, the South African Open in December, as you heard Louis. The Alfred Dunhill and the Mauritius Open. David Pouj won the Malaysian Open, didn't he? And Carlos Ortiz won the uh, International no. Series event in no, no, Oman. Avance, a gold medalist in the Pan American Games. Anaban Lahiri, what's he up to? That was almost a fantastic birdie at 14. Charles Schwartzel now for birdie at 14 from off the green with the putter. Yeah, right club. He'll be disappointed with that second shot. Really good position. Well, you'll take par from here. But stranger things have happened. Uh Right. Well, he's getting them to the hole. That's what you got to do. That was a good effort. Louis yeah. at the 15th. On the left rough, that ball sitting a little down. Not too bad. But this is going to be a difficult shot to judge. Coming out of the rough. A lot of wind. Straight off that red seat. You don't want to miss this right. It will be a difficult up and down with the wind direction and not having much green to work with. Anything left of this pin is a great result. He's gripping it down. Try and punch one in. Let's take you to 14 and our leader by two, Wako Neiman. Done from a long way off the putting surface, there as beautifully judged. Brooks Kepka for birdie at 13, and this would get smash GC. Well, no, they're still level 29 under par with Torque. Brooks with some off season moves, and they are paying off in grand style. He traded for the 
individual winner Taylor Gucci picks up Graham McDowell as a free agent they are very very strong they're built for success and they're pushing for another podium here today Dean Burmester huge moments in the team competition where every shot is absolutely vital he's off the green here putting for Eagle Bit of work to do for his birdie to get Stinger back within two. AK's second shot at 12. Oh, I'll tell you, Jerry, he is looking better, you know. Well, yeah, I think uh, I'd love to give your thoughts on it, but I think he's doing um, that which he should be doing. He's looks like he is figuring things out slowly, but already. Mm. I mean, he's getting better. He's he's hitting crisper shots. He's making better putts. He's scoring better, obviously. Um, he's one under through his last eight holes, Jerry. He's shaking off. Is he really? Yeah. Wow. Oh, Tringale. Oh, we get the full celebration from Cameron. But uh, back to AK, David, he, he's showing signs of life, I guess, is the easiest way to yeah. do it. Yeah, you know, I mean, we're three runs in. You know, how much can you expect? That's one round every 1,600 days yes. on average. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Bryson is on the par five fourth, his penultimate hole, his second shot. Oh, right into the heart of the green from the rough. That's some strength. An eagle there for Bryson and a birdie at his last hole. It'll be a 60. His teammate, Charles Howell, four under today. Tee shot at three. This is a staggering display at the moment by the Crushers. They were 18 under coming into Championship Sunday. They've almost doubled it. They're 17 under today, 35 under overall. A three-shot yeah. lead. I'm a par from I can't get the name in the par. I can't even wait. Both titles, the individual and the team title going to the wire in Jeddah here. Charles Schwartzel about to tee off at 15. He trails Waco Neiman by two strokes with four holes to play. And his Stinger team, who have blown a double-digit lead to trail the Crushers by three. Usually when you get to this part of the golf course, the wind is noticeably stronger. But right now, it's about the same as it has been all day. It's still strong. Deschambeau's on the green with an eagle putt at the fourth. Charles Howell the third still has to play that hole. <laughs> Which is rather good news for the Crushers. Stinger have clawed one back. There's life in the South Africans yet. Dean Burmester. That was a birdie for him at 18. They are 33 under. They trail the Crushers by two. Uh, Schwarzel looks super confident. That was a beautiful swing he made. Oh, what a tee yeah, shot. Really Low nice. hook into the wind, straight up the middle. He's, right, he's got every shot. 30, 40, 50 yards of run on that. That's an amazing penetrating flight. Just shaped it around the shape of the fairway. Beautiful shot. He's Trevino, but 50, 60 yards longer. Yeah. Great. 
Anthony Kim for birdie at 12. And in the context of his overall score, AK is one under for his last nine holes. And remember yesterday he parred his final 11. You get the sense there are way better things to come as he settles back into life as a professional golfer on the live golf circuit. This. We feel, he feels, is the best stage for him to return and to try and reclaim former glories. Now, this is Louis on 15 for par. Hit a nine iron, tried to punch one in and caught that wind short right. Decided to go with the putter to put up that huge mount. And just had a lot of hit to that putt. And he's got this long one. Or par. Should move to his left. This is a big putt, both for him and Stinger GC. That's better, Louis. He stays at 12 under, and Stinger hold firm on 33 under par, two back of Crusher. To the green at four, Bryson DeChambeau has this for eagle. Crusher leads by two, but I, when I look at the holes they still have remaining, I, I got to give a pretty good chance to Stinger. Even though they have two players with Crushers to play this hole, including Bryson, uh, Stinger's got the easier combination of holes coming down the stretch for the four players. Up the hill here, right to left. Well, you would imagine Bryson will make that for birdie to stretch the lead to three shots over Stinger GC. Wow. Bryson will be eight under for his round with the par four fifth to play. That is stunning in this win. Absolutely stunning. He's going to shoot a, what, a 63 and 62 or better and still not win uh, without a lot of help. Shot there from John Rahm. Yeah. To the third green, Charles Howell the third. Well, it helps the pressures when you play a hole this tough and you hit a shot this good for Charles yeah. Howell. This is for birdie. That was beautiful. Never going to miss. That had to come right at the end. Just beautiful from Charles Howe the third. Wow. And the Crushers are 36 under. They lead by three. And Chucky three sticks is playing his part. He's five under for his round. The Crushers came into today 18 under. They're 18 under today alone. Sorts of. Charlotte Schwartzel still harbors hopes of a double here individually and with his team, Stinger. He's two back at Wako Neem in his second shot into 15. Yeah, and with four to play, he's got to start to put pressure on now. That's not all that helpful. To the 14th. It's a par four. This is Anna Bandla here, his third. Honorbond finishes on, well, he has still 15 and 16 to play, and they are all you can ask for. But if he gets, gets that one home, be a nice relief, even though he still has two difficult holes remaining. Also, we, we talk about this and talk about so much in this tight team competition. These guys are fighting for individual points for the season-long tables as well. The late 23 shot. If you if you're holding it, okay. straight twenty. Graham McDowell has just birdied the tenth for Smash GC. 
they are level on 29 under par in third place with Torque. Because he was able to hit that stinger with a 10-yard draw, he's 39 yards closer to the hole than Charles Schwartzel. Wow. It just makes this game so much easier. Down, 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 down. Ah. So this was a G-Max birdie attempt at the 10th hole. Remember, he guarded the lowest round of the entire field on, in round three in Las Vegas. Oh, he's walking after that one straight away, wasn't he? G-Mac in confident mood. He is three under for the day, delivering once again for Brooks Kepka's side, who are in a tie for third. Yeah. Bryson made that birdie at four. Crusher's lead is now four. He's got one hole to play, the par four fifth. Brooks, this is for birdie at 14. John Rahm for birdie at 17. His challenge hasn't materialized. And you look back to that birdie putt yeah. on 18 yesterday that slipped by. That was telling. The tee at 16, Louis Oosthuizen. He's let that drift to the right. It's the 15th green with a, a rather pretty backdrop. Schwartz all the next to play. and DeChambeau is only three off the lead, albeit he only has one hole to play. And it is a birdie hole. And Neiman, although he's in good shape here, looking at an unlikely birdie putt. He still has to get past 60, but then 17 and 18 are not bogey holes per se at all, unless you make a rather large uh, mistake. Made a few from this length. How's Schwartzel this week? Not quite. Sebastian Munoz, a few moments ago for par at 14 for Torque. They were 29 under, and they're now 28 under. But Taylor Gooch for birdie at 18, and this would put a two-shot gap between Smash GC and Torque for third place, and Smash are only three behind Stinger for second. Boy, it makes a difference, doesn't it? All four scores counting on the final day. Yeah, it sure does. Waco's caddy Gary Matthews just came up to me and says, what's the situation? Where's Louis? Did Louis the 15, he asked me. goes in he's pretty much got it uh, pretty squarely in his grasp but Dami can't then play safe he's got Torque fighting for a chance at a podium still I'm sure that's in the back of his mind oh, 
That's OK, Waco. He leads by two. The Crushers lead Stinger unbelievably by four. Kokrak for birdie out at 15. This would get smashed within two of Stinger for second. A spot of uh, trouble for AK at 13. Oh, he's good. Oh, see. there's a shot. <laughs> yeah. a right in between the palm trees and the portal head. <laughs> that would have been a TIO uh, relief if that were in his line of sight to the hole. But uh, I think he liked the gap between there for that shot. Now Poulter at 13. Green, or the flag is perched in the back right corner there. Boosty. This for par out at 16 to stay three back at Neiman. Keep Stinger within shouting distance of Crushers. Mm, another one slips by for Louis Oosthuizen, and, and he's falling out of the reckoning individually. It's another drop shot for Stinger GC. T at 18, John Rahm. This ball is going to feel a little sting here. Yeah, <laughs> he did, did not leave any of that back on the tee. Well, it's another Championship Sunday that is delivering drama on all fronts. Absolutely extraordinary. Now, Waco Neiman is holding firm by two shots at the moment individually. We'll get to the team competition in a moment because it's all happening there. But how impressed are you at the moment? It's not done yet, but by Waco no. Neiman's temperament on Championship Sunday. Well, his temperament has been fantastic. These are the times where you want the ball. Successful people, whether they're businessmen or, or actors or musicians or athletes, you know, they, they want to be in a place where they know they're going to be uncomfortable. And he's uncomfortable right now, but he wants it. You know, and uh, I would expect him to finish it off the way that he's played today. Don, no sign of nerves, really, are there? You've been following him all day. No, not one bit, Arlo. I mean, the shots he's been able to pull off, especially that tee shot on the last hole. I mean, he didn't waste any time, and you could have seen it was a thing of beauty. I mean, it never got 15, 20 feet off the ground. It drew into the wind, and that's why he hit it there miles down. But you know what? This hole will get your attention. You know, when they get nervous down a stretch, and like David said, he's feeling there's a, a level of, of discomfort out there because of the pressure. It was the youngest guy in the league, Caleb Surratt, in our, in our podcast, who had one of the most insightful things ever. He said, pressure is a privilege. Yes. You, you have to play well to get in the position to feel that pressure. He's feeling it now, but that's what they practice for. Well, Jerry, David, take us through Waco Neiman's last three holes to seal the deal. 16, David, I would say you'd want about a four-shot lead and you just want to take the green out of play. Yeah, <laughs> if exactly. you could. But it's, yeah. a, it's a bear. Uh, 17 and 18, uh, you know, as we know, they're pretty, yeah, pretty rival. What do we need to watch out for, though, on 17? Well, 17, it depends what they hit off the tee. There's a band of rough that runs through the fairway there, you know, about 60, 70 yards short of the green. So it wouldn't surprise me to see Waco Neiman hit something less than driver off that tee. 
the team contest has been absolutely bonkers today. The Crushers are 19 under par for the day. They trailed Stinger by 11 going into the final day, Championship Sunday. They lead them now by five. Bryson DeChambeau going super low again. That was his eagle at 18. Paul Casey delivering. Bryson calls them his band of brothers. They are the reigning Live Golf team champions. That was Casey's second at two, so a birdie there. Bryson is currently playing his final hole, the fifth. This was for birdie at one. Little excessive hip movement there for Bryson in celebration, but it looks like the Crushers, bar a few late twists, might take the team title, but it's not done yet. Uh, Schwartz, if he can throw one in close here, but it's drifting right. Well, it started on such a good line too, Don. We had a great down the line camera shot of it. Well, 190 yards of treachery. You just feel if he's one under for the next three holes, he should be fine. I mean, Schwartzel has to birdie all three to tie then. Or maybe Eagle the last. Oh, I just got a signal for an eight iron. From 190. Well, he may that want to take that area on the right where the players walk off the green out of play. That's the really the only danger spot on the right. It also suggests to me, David, he's going to start this left and right the wind. Mm -hmm. Or he's just trying to hit a fairway. <laughs> it's not that wide a fairway either. I know. Oh, he's trying uh, to hold it up against it. That's is that bunker? No, not yet. No, that's actually fine. Yeah. One of the four crushers is Anna Van Lahiri. If the crushers do win here, it'll be the largest comeback on Championship Sunday in Live Golf history. The four aces came back from a seven-shot deficit in Adelaide in front of thousands of fans in 2023. They're 10 shots better as a team than the next best scorer for the day. It's not like these teams are chopped liver, you know? <laughs> They're pretty darn good. AK for birdie at 13. He will end his return tournament on the 14th hole. Brooks at 15. Nine under par for his tournament. He was seeking a three-peat after two previous wins here in the Live Golf League in Jeddah. But at the moment, his concentration will be on achieving a podium finish for Smash GC, who, of course, won in Las Vegas last time out. Well, the Live Golf League continues to change the way the game is played. It is also always improving on an amazing fan experience. And like any other in golf, to see it for yourself in 2024, scan the QR code on the screen for tickets to future events next week. We're bringing the league to Hong Kong for the first time. We'd love to see you there. Then in April, Live Golf will be back in Miami and looking forward to a great week in South Florida. Charles Hall on the fourth green. And this is his final hole. This is for birdie. Oh, that's a final round. 64 for Charles Hall the third. And the Crushers are disappearing over the hill. Bryson, his captain, for birdie at five. This is one of the all-time great team performances on Championship Sunday. The Crushers are indeed insanely good. This is why they are our reigning champions. There's a decent performance from Philbert O. Mickelson there, too. He's tied for fifth at the minute at 10 under.
so much more comfortable a shot being on the grass with a good lie than being in the bunker. One and second. Pace looks excellent. Oh, that's what he wanted, a par on this hole. How about Bryson's tournament? 63 on the opening day, 73 yesterday, and a 62 today. Mm. Good consistent stuff. <laughs> No in between with that. Paul Casey to finish his day. Still a bit of work to do. Drush's lead is six. Waco taps in for par at 16, and he stays too clear. Well, Brooks backed it up a little off the front of the 15th green. This is his third shot now. Well played. And that's the view from Club 54 overlooking the 16th green. Well, if something incredible happens here, the cat would be running a mock amongst the pigeons. They had the line. Schwartz all two back with two to play. Here's captain Louis Oosthuis in his second shot into 17. John Rahm, his approach into the par 5 18th. He will have the first to play. Attaboy. Yeah, that's a fine shot. <laughs> 16 green, Jason Kokrak. As this to time, team smash for second. of hauled in Stinger GC. It's a tie for second place on 32 under. Now, the Live Golf Plus app is filled with great content, including an incredible and informative series of lessons from the best players in the world. Hey guys, this is Cam Smith. Hi, I'm Bryson DeChambeau. I'm Bubba Watson. And welcome, welcome, welcome to my Live lesson. So if you're like me and you miss fairways, this is when the creativity comes out. Focus on that target. That's what I'm focused on. Pay the man. For me, I just want to make it simple as possible. Tempo for sure is one thing you need to keep an eye on. Cam Smith, he has taken complete control here. I like to aim the putter, make sure that's perfect. Then I take my stance, give it one good look at the hole, and hit a good putt. Houdini with the flat stick. Need a golf ball. Here we go. Bryson DeChambeau electrifies the crowd. So guys, there's a lot of mysteries around hitting it really far. So that's what psycho mode comes in. Try to get a little psycho with it. Yeah, there it is. That was pepper. Let your body free up. Let things just move more. Don't feel like you're restricted. If you can do that, you're on your way to better golf. The Crushers are just pouring it on here late on on Championship Sunday. This is one of the all-time great round three performances by any of our teams. Just incredible. That was Anaban Lahiri, who then birdies uh, 15. So he's got 16 to play. He's five under for his round. And the Crushers collectively are quite amazing. 20 under par today. Jason Kokrak off 17. Just laying it up. Send that ball down there. Well, there's life in the stingers yet. 
Louis Oosthuizen, the captain. Not much has dropped for him today, but that does. That was for a birdie three at 17. So that gets Stinger to 33 under in solo second place. Well, you never know if Louis can eagle 18. He might still be in with a shout, but it feels like the chance might have slipped through his fingers. An interesting play here. He could get it close to the green in this wind, but decided against it. He's found the fairway. Wow. Now, Waco. Dean Burmester for birdie at two. Little sting in the tail from the South Africans, potentially, and he wasn't far away. Oh. Demon with driver. With Jerry, driver. David, I was just going to ask you that question. Do you think this is necessary? No. I mean, he's, he's been driving it beautifully. No, it's not necessary, no. but boy, he, he can get it close to this green. Oh, That's yeah, for he, sure. The left green side bunkers are right. He does not want to miss this right. It's headed towards that left green side bunker. Even on the grass, it's not a bad spot. Yep, that's it. That's Plenty of room to work with there. That's just fine. John Rahm for Eagle on 18 to finish on a high note. Oh, he's got the first to play, hasn't he? So to send him down the first on a high note. <laughs> yes. <laughs> AK, second at 14. Be right. Not a good swing. This is the green at 12. Graham McDowell. To tie smash for second. And doing like he did. To an extent, in Vegas, as the MVP for their team, he is three under par today after being one over through the first two days, which played a little easier. <laughs> Make that four. And smash are level with Stinger on 33 under par. They're only five behind the crushes, but the holes are running out. Graham Adal, who won the Saudi International here in 2020, said at this stage of his career he wants to be held accountable. And when you're playing for Brooks Kepka, there's nowhere to hide, and he's delivering when it matters on Championship Sunday for his new team. Kevin Nahr here on 18 for Birdie. and Smash combined a 31 under par today. The rest of the field, the other 12 teams combined, are 23 oh under par. <laughs> Come off. Short guys here. Okay. Let's take a look at the 17th, David. 17 straight away, shortish par four, and you'll see there's a band of rough right about there it, uh, runs across the fairway Cockrack will be first to play here having laid up short of that rough. should be ideal yeah i mean you're thinking low teens or something yeah absolutely just 131 off yards right now, huh? Dom? yeah mostly down maybe okay. a tick off your left okay. the problem is from his angle, going over this bunker, landing short of the pin, it's on a down slope. Who 
will have a flat part of his 15 feet left. Well, he's looking at the leaderboard, I'm sure, and he's probably not playing left. Oh, see that bounce. Oh. All right, hung on. Phil Mickelson over the second. This is his final hole, his second shot. Three under par today. And a good chance to pop that in for 66. Back to the nearest pursuer for Neiman Schwartzel, and he's still got to contend with that downslope to yeah. try and get it close. Doesn't Even he? though he's on the left half of the fairway, he does have to contend with it. And you saw that bounce from cold crack. I mean, yeah. it's like landing on a tabletop. I wonder if he saw it. I'm sure he probably did. So perhaps it might change his strategy. I mean, if he goes at the pin, he can't get it closer than 15, 20 feet. If he goes left, he has a chance to hit it 10, 15 feet. Oh. Mm. Catches the slope at the front and that kills it stone dead. He hits it on the apex of that slope and it's up there probably inside the 10 to 15 feet Dom was talking about. But instead, down below the slope. Anthony Kim at the 14th. You know, I, I truly believe this is exactly where he wanted to hit his tee shot. I was just going to say that, Dom. That might be within a foot of where he was aiming that. It's incredible, Jerry. I mean, and he carried the desert there. I mean, if he was in the desert, he could have been up against a big rock or anything. Even though there are removal of obstructions, you never know. I think he was aiming at this bunker. If it went in the bunker, that's fine. Yeah. If it didn't, he's in a good lie. He's got a great lie, and he's got the absolutely perfect angle. I don't think if there was a question in his mind, he couldn't carry the, the, the desert that he would have hit driver or that Gary would have led him. Still got to judge this firm green as we've seen. Downwind and some slope to deal with. It's got, oh boy, watch this, watch this. It might even go in. <laughs> <laughs> That's a touch of class right there, right when he needed it. Well, I, you know, I guess he didn't need it that much, but he took it anyway. Brandon Grace for Birdie at two, for Stinger GC. That would have got them into solo second place, but they're going to be left scratching their heads tonight at where it all went horribly wrong on Championship Sunday. Now, Anthony Kim, a lot of headlines. He was trending on X at the start of the week or the start of the tournament. Still is. Yep this to finish his first tournament back as a pro with a part at 40. And he doesn't manage to. I still think he proved something to himself this week. I really do. That is, I mean, in your mind for nearly a dozen years, you are no longer a golfer and never will be again. And all of a sudden, he has the courage to come out and do this because of his daughter, because of his family. That brought, the, brought the love of the game back to him, and, and we are blessed to have him doing it out here. Little flickers of the mag magic again today. Enough to convince me that he, he can do the impossible. Carl Schwartzel on 70. He trails Waco Neiman by two. And it has to go in, doesn't it? It's to stay two behind.
Sue Ann, it's down to you. Anthony, 12 years away from the game that you love, how do you assess your first week back? Um, obviously, it was a rough week. Um, I'm excited to be playing professional golf again. I feel uh, very blessed that I have this opportunity and um, got a lot to work on, but I had a, a lot of good things go my way this week, so I'm looking forward to building on that and um, being in contention at some point this year. What are some of the positives that you can take with you to Hong Kong? I, I'm definitely uh, hitting the ball well. I'm doing a lot of things well. I know the scores don't reflect that, and, and it's disappointing to score that way. But at the same time, I know I have a lot to build on, and, and um, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. What has it meant to have your daughter and your wife both here to watch you back doing what you love? It means everything. I wouldn't be here without them. Um, I just feel so extremely blessed that, that I have this opportunity to create memories with my family. This experience is amazing. Everyone that lives been been uh, first class, and I feel honored to be a part of this organization. And, and moving forward, I hope to represent them well. Well, we love having you here. Go and get some rest. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, it is our pleasure to have AK with us. He parred the last 11 holes yesterday. He was level par over the last 11 holes today. This was for birdie at two. He's a wild card for the remainder of the 2024 season, so he has the time to work on his game. That was his second shot at five. And we started to see some of the old magic. His third shot out of the bunker at nine. What a beautiful shot that was. And as he said, maybe on the scoreboard it's not reflected, but his performance was very encouraging indeed. Now then, Charles Schwartzel, he knows that Waco Neiman has an excellent chance for birdie at 17. This to stay for the time being at two strokes back. Well, our two-time champion Brooks Kepka finished his competition in Jeddah with a par putt at 16 a round of 66 today for brooks and his team smashed gc jason kokrak still out on the course they're level in second with stinger on 33 under par john rahm his second at one Beautifully played, got a little check out of it, even out of that rough. Well, this could be the dagger, and it is. Well played, Waco Neiman. That's a birdie for him, and the lead is three, with one to play. That one was funny getting to the green. Yeah. He landed right there, and he just... Yeah. Birdie there, David, I, in my mind, makes the 18th hole. I mean, with a two-shot lead, playing a par five against the guy you're playing with two back, um, you have to you have to keep in mind you have to make birdie. Yeah. In your mind, you've got to give him an eagle in your head. Yeah. Now he doesn't. No. no he can play for par if he so desires. Uh, Torque doesn't look like they can get on the podium at this point with basically the rest of the field finished, except for the group and our, shagger, our staggered shotgun start. There's a couple others that are putting out of their last hole. but So the team doesn't, team aspect doesn't enter his mind. Now it's all about just getting the individual part done. He has just driven the ball extraordinarily well this week. Hit it both ways, left to right, right to left, high, low, penetrating flights. Well, there was never a, a stench of any sort of playoff here, David. Not even a mere whiff. No, no. Third shot at 18 for Louis. 
Uh, he needs to make four here if he's to sneak into second place. Well, that might help. That's important. Schwartzel was uh, keeping the highest possible finish today is going to help him huge at the end of the year. Waco Neiman about to tee off at 18 with a three stroke advantage. And chaps, by the way, I asked this caddy, was that his aim point on 17 T? Is it exactly where he's aiming? The middle of those that left bunker. This guy's good. Yeah, he hits it where he's aiming. <laughs> There's some rumors out there. He's pretty good. He hit that where he was aiming too. There's that draw that he didn't have not that long ago. The high draw. Oh. That might suit him pretty well at the little course down in Georgia in a month. Yeah. He was asked yesterday after his round, where have the improvements been made? And he said, the driving is so good. He said, I'm confident I could be aggressive off the tee. I get an extra 20 yards. He said his chipping is much better as well. Adrian Morocco, he ends with a birdie. 11 under par for the Polish Prince. Kokrak is the only smash player still out on the course. As they and Stinger, it looks like battle for second place. Of course, Schwarzel and Oosthuizen still out there for the South Africans. On 18, the second easiest hole on the course today. John Rahm trying to finish up with the birdie. would squeak him into a tie for third more than likely and if he had been able to hold a few of those he would have been right in it Schwarzel on the tee at 18, trailing Neiman by three. Ah. We'll give you a squint at the last hole here, par five. Out of bounds all the way down the left. Is the practice ground and then the second shot over water if you decide to go at it and uh, Jerry I'll be interested uh, the flag on the front there today if if Waco Neiman lays up he's probably got to do it with a sand wedge <laughs> there'll be no laying up there my the right bunker might be the target but right no bunker yeah yeah And it's a level par 74 Abe answer today. 
Well, Live Golf continues to provide the most outstanding viewer experience in golf. This week, we unveiled the first iteration of our groundbreaking Any Shot, Any Time initiative. It's available on the web at livegolfplus.com. Every group on the golf course will be covered live with AI-informed graphics. So, fans, you can choose to see any player on the course. Just switch from group to group if you want for an amazing second screen experience. We'll be deeply hurt, David, if people put it on their main television we want them to watch us yeah. later this year we'll expand the feature to include uh, the live golf plus app on all devices there will also be a, a team viewing with a four box and any shot callback featuring replays with the click of a button so you can check that out in hong kong as of friday we are back to back Well, there's a big putt here for uh, Louis Oosthuizen. This would get him to 13 under par. Yeah, that's a good finish for Louis. 13 under for the tournament and Stinger. They go into second place. A stroke ahead of Smash, but it'll be disappointment for the South Africans tonight. Suan, back down to you. Bryson, congratulations. You guys are the team winners here in Jeddah. You guys collectively shot six under yesterday. Yeah. Today, you collectively shot 20 under. <laughs> what happened overnight? Uh, just our team is such a, how do I say it? We have a lot of resolve. We uh, come back from tough uh, go-aheads and I'll say that Charles, Paul and Bond, they never give up. And that's why I have them on the team because we know every day we can go super low and um, clearly, that was the case today. We were pretty. Uh, hopefully, we kind of shocked the the whole ecosystem of live. Uh, I think that's hopefully a jolt in their pants. Going, wait a second, these guys, these guys are, are pretty solid. So, proud of these guys. Proud of Charles for uh, the way he came back and played today. And um, I, I even saw him on two. <laughs> I saw him at it close. I was clapping. He couldn't hear me. So it's cool. Like even though I'm playing well, I'm still rooting for everybody else. It's it's a cool environment. I love it. Now, you, I watched you play yesterday. You struggled off the tee. What was the difference between yesterday and today? Uh, the, well, the driver face just flattened a bit, and I didn't have. I lost control of it, and then put a new driver in, and sure enough, yippee ki yay, <laughs> a little straighter today, and then I uh, made a couple more putts. So, well, Charles, I think this is the one of the biggest comeback uh, and the, the team thing here in, in Live. What are your thoughts on that? How proud are you of your team? Well. Yeah, you know, today was a tough day. It was really windy out there. Um, you know, the golf course isn't easy. If you get off a little bit, it can uh, it can make you look foolish. So, uh, yeah, you know, I was really proud of the team. Uh, I was proud of how you know everybody hung in there. And obviously, we have Bryson setting the example out there. He kept making birdies. He was up in the group in front of me, so I kept watching all the birdies he was making, and uh, I tried to keep up with him, but just uh, couldn't do it. Well, congratulations, guys, and uh, have fun with the champagne spring. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> a remarkable performance by them today. Jason Kokrak seeking to deny Stinger second place for Team Smash. That's crazy. <laughs> Brooks Koepka has shot in the 60s every round this year, quietly. Well, Charles Schwartz will be next. Yeah, and Joaquin Neiman yeah, has driven it so point. far up here, he almost drove it into the water. Isn't it the pitching wedge? No. Yeah. David, if you look on your yardage book, it's 416 to the water. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he's hit it 410. <laughs> Remarkable. Now, Schwartzel. Well, I think he's... Trying to lock up second place all by himself. Yeah, that's a layup. Yeah, it's it's the right play. You're talking about Neiman having a hit a sandwich to lay up. He might have a sandwich into the green. Well, Dom, uh, with our right, ball. with our commentary box here facing the green from the right side of the fairway. This is the first ball tee shot we've been able I mean, to see that, all week that, out of our window. It's 155 to yeah. carry on to where that that hazard stake is. On the left. Well, yeah, the, the left of his ball. I mean, if you hit it at his ball and you want to hit wedge, you can hit wedge. Yeah, yeah. I mean, 
because nine nine you going a little bit don't, don't you agree yeah. i mean 70 let's I just mean, say we I want to pitch a, at 170. if i hit a full wedge i mean it's gonna go if i hit it on time 152 it's probably gonna go 65. he, he could hit yeah, it with the umbrella and it's straight down and manage straight to down. win <laughs> straight down If you just want to hit something at his ball. And listen, if it goes into the bunker, it's still not bad. You're chipping back into... Well, I mean, I, I'm saying pitching at 70. Don't you think there's 20 of wind? Yeah. So that, that goes 150. Yeah. I like it at the light, just left the light. Perfect. Love it. Love it. Go ahead and hit it. That's a great job from Gary Matthews both in Mexico and here. That's what you want to hear. I love it. Go ahead. Well, that's probably the worst swing he's made all week and it's fine. Take another look at this one. Yeah, Just high lump on. it over that water. Yeah. Anywhere over there. High on the face, off the heel a little bit. Yeah. I can promise you when that ball landed on dry land, Gary was a very happy man. Because that seals the deal. Schwarzschel next. There is a little subpop plotted to play here on 18. Jason Kokrak and Charles Schwarzschel represent Smash and Stinger. One shot between the two teams for second place at the moment. Another great shot right there. Well, Live Golf Fantasy is back with an exciting format that offers multiple ways to win. Pick your team. I'd advise you have uh, Waco Neiman as your captain. Then compete against friends, foes, and family from around the world. Watch your team climb the pylon. You can win great prizes. You can get bragging rights over your pals or your family. It's fantasy but louder, and it's another great way to enjoy the Live Golf League. From Stinger GC, Charles Schwartzel, and the captain of Torque GC, Joaquin Neiman. Waco came into the final day here with a two-stroke advantage and nobody has been able to lay a glove on him. Jason Kokrak is level par for his round so far. Having carded a magnificent 62 yesterday to get into contention chance to round his his week off with a birdie that might get smash into second place in a tie at least with stinger well and they they do a team tiebreaker for the podium positions uh, but not for the points the points are split but second and third cumulative but it's important too to people who might be tuning in for the first time or being new to live golf the, the team purse, which is sizable each week, is only paid out to the top three teams. You look at that, uh, that collective of Torque. They were together celebrating <laughs> Waco's victory after that playoff in virtual darkness in Mayakoba. They were spraying champagne over each other in Oman last weekend. And it looks like it's going to happen again here today. I'm just laughing. <laughs> he's, he's, got the he's got the putter out. 
Which is exactly what you should do. Yeah. You know, I mean, if he needed to make four, he certainly wouldn't be hitting this club. Bunted up there on the green somewhere. <laughs> oh, that's just gorgeous. A worthy champion once again. Time for a bit of afternoon tea. Overlooking the 18th green. And the crushers are uh, surveying things. They're probably inching a little closer to the podium as they prepare to raise yet another team trophy. A fourth shot for Charles Schwartzel. Oh! Unlucky. That means Kokrak will have the chance to tie Smash for second place. I think there'll be a bit of an inquest over the Bry tonight <laughs> amongst the yeah. Stinger players, how they managed to let an overnight seven-stroke lead slip in such spectacular fashion. Jason Kokrak. He would tie individually for fifth if he makes this. That's worth dollars and points for him individually. So Stinger will finish second, smash third behind the crushers, but the stage is cleared. For Waco Neiman. <laughs> to end with a birdie. Wonderful position to be in. Waco Neiman could go toe to toe with any player on the planet right now. This sensation from Santiago is in the form of his life. He's won two out of the three live titles on offer so far this season. And he's won it in Cheddar, going away from the field. He ends on 17 under par. He wins by four shots. Would I be me? 63, 64. 66. A dominant victory for Joaquin Neiman. Down to you, Dom. Waco, three wins in three months. You're the hottest player on the planet. What does this win mean for you and your confidence? Yeah, it's, it's huge. I, I mean, obviously, we got another week to come next week. I'm, I mean, I told myself that I can, I can probably win the th these three weeks that I'm playing uh, overseas, and yeah, I mean, this is uh, it's a good start. I got next week, hopefully, try to do the same, play good golf, and yeah, see what's happening. Do you think you're now one of the favourites to win a major championship this summer on current form? How's that possible if I'm like <laughs> hundred in the world? <laughs> oh, but you're not. <laughs> You're better than that. You know that. You're the hottest player on the planet right now. No question. Yeah, I mean, it's. I mean, it's just. I am. I'm, I'm more more than happy about the way I'm playing. Uh, I just wanna keep doing the same. You know, I just wanna keep on the same path, keep doing the same practice that I've been doing, and hopefully keep hitting it the same way. And, and yeah, I mean, uh, pretty proud of the way I played during all week. We were close of being on the podium with the team, and 
Yeah, I mean, that was... That second shot there was probably the more... <laughs> well, I don't say... I don't know how to say the correct way, but... Normally I would go for the green and for the pin, but I was just trying to, you know... <laughs> you hit that drive 410 yards. Yeah, Is that the difference in your game this year? Your caddy, Gary Matthews, told me you're playing a different game. What's the difference in your game this year? Yeah, 100%. I mean, it's, I think it's a little bit of everything, but the most improved has been my driver. It's been a lot longer and a lot straighter. So, yeah, I mean, I think if I can keep being comfortable and confident hitting those shots and, you know, like the last two drivers I hit were impressive. I mean, I hit it. I carried like 330, 340 on 17. I give myself a good angle. If it wasn't because of the driver, it wasn't an easy birdie, and then same here. So yeah, really, really happy the way it's been going. You've played a lot of golf around the world lately. Winning is tiring. How is your energy level? You need a break soon? Yeah, I want to keep going. Well done. Thank well you. done. Congratulations. Great playing. One more week next week in Hong Kong. It's a good one. Yes, sir. We'll All see right. everybody there. All right. Congratulations. Great playing. Uh, let's relive the winning moment as Waco touches base with the family and with the friends. Boy, he's flying the flag for Chile as a nation. Ah, yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's it. And for South America as a continent. Here he is over his birdie put at 18, knowing he sealed victory, and he just extends the final margin to four strokes. Victorious in Mexico after a four-hole playoff at the start of the season. And he wins his second in three with a four-stroke victory here in Jeddah. Remember, in Mexico, that included an opening round of 59. Turn on one. Is there a better player on the planet right now than no. Waco Neiman? No. You can't say that. Okay, over the, back, back to the studio. Oh, this is yeah, the studio. <laughs> over the last three months. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's just been absolutely unstoppable. He hasn't finished outside of the top, what, five? Right. In uh, any event that he's played in against world-class fields, he's the best player in the world right now. He's decided clearly at the end of last year in the Live Golf League, where by his own admission he didn't play his best golf, even though Todd Kay were, were very good. Um, and he's gone away and he's played golf around the world. He went down under, won the Australian Open. That qualified him for the Open Championship. Clearly for Waco, he's a young player. He knows his talent and he wants to play majors. It's tough because he can't get the points to qualify, but that yeah. got him into the Open Championship. Uh, and then he gets the invite into the Masters by virtue of, of the general form and activity that, he, that he's displayed. He came second in Oman last week. He won in Mexico, of course. So here's a man that is prepared to ply his trade around the world to hone his skills, to hone his game, and it's paying dividends here. Yeah, and I mean, you have to hope that the ruling bodies and the people that are, you decide whether or not you're going to play in a major have a sudden attack of common sense. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, really, you want the best players in the world in, in your tournaments, in your championships, you have to have Waco Neiman. I think it's a moot point now. If you don't have Waco in your tournament, uh, if it's a major championship, then uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, guys. Sorry, Rory. <laughs> sorry, everybody else. It deserves an asterisk. I think golfing fans around the world deserve to see it Absolutely. don't they as well well here's some highlights from today he came in with a two-stroke advantage after opening rounds of 63 and 64 and he just looked calm and collected from the word go that was his second shot into the first where he opened with a birdie uh, and you mentioned, David, that when he won in Mexico, yeah. but it was up and down in the final round, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. And I think he learned a lot from that. This is his birdie at 10. Oh. And one or two key par saves as well, particularly at the ninth. And then this was his uh, second at 16 as he was closing in on victory. Louis Oosthuizen and Charles Schwartzel just couldn't close the gap. Second at 17 here for Waco. Yeah, and, and part of it, Jerry, was, you know, it was where he missed 
where he missed on 16, you know, was the perfect spot where he missed on 17, the perfect spot, you know, he just did everything right. And the winning moment. And a moment that extended his winning advantage to four strokes and all the Tour K players on the 18th green celebrating once again. So this is how it finished. Four under today for Waco Neiman, 17 under par for the competition. Ahead of Louis Oosthuizen and Charles Schwartzel, both on 13 under par. And they're left to Rue, uh, blowing a seven stroke advantage in the team competition. Did they blow it or did the crushers just snatch it from them? Now leave people at home to debate that. Well, when you look at the, the overall scores for the remainder of the teams that played like normal people today, and not like the superstars of the Crushers, uh, they didn't blow it today. So the Crushers took out the team title in, in quite staggering fashion. It's the greatest comeback on Championship Sunday in Live Golf history. They were 11 back of Stinger overnight. They were 20 under par today. And they've won by four. Anna Van Lahiri, his second shot into seven. Bryson DeChambeau carded an eight under par, 62. This is Charles Howe III for birdie at 13. A six under par, 64 for him today. Here's Bryson again. 63 on Friday, 73 yesterday. And he mentioned his driver, replaced it today. And lo and behold, or oh, yippee ki as he said, a 62 yeah. today. Fantastic golf. Anna Van Lahiri, five under par, 65. Paul Casey, a one under par, 69. And you look at their form from towards the end of last season. Second in Greenbrier, second in Bedminster, first in Chicago, tied fourth here in Jeddah. They won the team championship in Miami, second in Mayakoba, fourth in Vegas and they've won again here. Smash take third place behind Stinger GC. Well, when you have three of the lowest four scores of the entire day on your team, you're going to make a move. Yeah. yeah. How impressive was that, David? And, and would you consider it a blown opportunity by Stinger or just they just couldn't live with Crusher today? Well, I, th I think it was a combination of both, but I mean, they're just so amazing on Sundays. You know, when it comes down to if they, when they've got their backs against the wall, you know, they produce their best stuff. And, the, you know, the, those are the signs of a champion. Well, remember the top four teams in the team competition at the end of 13 events, the regular season will get a bye through the first round into the semifinals of our season ending team championship. So the Crushers have started the season very well as they look to defend the title that they won in spectacular fashion in Miami at the end of last season. But today is all all about the crushers but mainly about Waco Neiman and his scintillating form a second victory in three live golf events so far this season let's send you down to the podium for the presentation hello Jetta welcome to the podium and championship celebration it's now it's a time familiar to experience now for crushers. Waco Neiman in third place from Stinger GC, Charles Schwartzel. Charles Schwartzel, back to form. And it's great to see the winner of our inaugural event in London back in, in place, June of 2022. He slipped GC, down to 38th Louis in the points Oosthuizen. tally last season. Louis Oosthuizen comes close once again. He was second in Oman as well in the international now, series last week. But Stinger, Oosthuizen. with individual finishes of second and third, did not seal the deal in the team competition. But Waco Neiman, there he is again, all smiles. His third win in six competitions worldwide. His second victory out of our three live golf competitions so far this season. He is in magnificent form. He'll go to Hong Kong, looking to win three out of four. And after that, of course, he has that invite to Augusta to compete in the Masters. And our individuals will exit stage left. And we will welcome Crusher's GC onto the podium once again. What a performance by them. As Bryson calls them. 
his band of brothers. Charles Howe III, Bryson DeChambeau, Anna Van Lahiri, and Paul Casey. They are starting a dynasty here in the Live Golf League. Their consistency is staggering. Let's get a bit of non-alcoholic champagne sprayed. <laughs> the Crushers with the greatest comeback on Championship Sunday in Live Golf team history. From 11 back to winning by four. They are your champions in Jeddah. And the world is, if they weren't in love with Waco Neiman already, they certainly are now, is the hottest golfer in the planet right now, says Richard. Wins the Jeddah event, crushes win the team event. Waco Neiman is my Masters pick, says Sergeant McDermott. He's the best player on the planet right now. The Masters tournament begins in 36 days. It certainly does. But we've got a small matter of Live Golf Hong Kong first. Yeah. And we cannot wait for that. Waco Neiman takes victory here in Jeddah by four strokes over Louis Oosthuizen and Charles Schwartzel. The Crushers with one of the all-time great championship Sundays, 20 under par to take victory over Stinger by four. Now for those watching in the USA and around the world leaving us now, it's time to switch over to Club 54, the Live Golf post round show, which can be found globally on Live Golf Plus or the Live Golf YouTube channel. Jerry has departed to join Christian Crosby for that or on the USA in the CW app. We'll see you again next week for Live Golf Hong Kong. We cannot wait. For now, goodbye from Jenna. has come to an end the best of the best in golf face off in this final day and boy did we have a show Waco Neiman two out of three live golf tournaments and we're here to talk about it welcome to Club 54 post round show I'm your host Christian Crosby and joining me is Don Boulay who just had a amazing interview with Waco Neiman and what I really love about your energy right now you came up here and you said Man, that was just amazing golf to watch. Do you you know, were really blown away. Let's let's talk about it. I'm almost emotional in the sense that I can't believe someone can play golf to that level. And I've seen a lot of golf, uh, and uh, especially the last two years, I've seen some of the best golf played in the game. But that was sublime. You, I, it was it was it was literally sublime. He from the first tee to the 18th hole. He had con complete control of his emotions. He was composed, and some of the shots he hit out there, I mean, it, it was ridiculously good. He must be on cloud nine, confidence-wise. He's the best player in the world right now. I mean, it, it didn't seem like anything would stop him. He was completely focused. You had the honor of following him around yeah, all day It was an today. honor. It was an honor. I got to know how that was. I mean, what, what did you observe following him around today specifically? It seemed like he was just locked in from start. Compared to Maya Koba, where he had a two-shot lead also, he had a four-shot lead, but then he got penalized two shots. He had a two-shot lead here. Yeah. There was a different vibe about him. He, I was looking at his eyes. You always can tell with a golfer when they're nervous and you know they're a little sort of uh, itchy and whatever. Yeah. He wasn't. He just his eyes were serene and uh, there's no tenseness in the face. He was ready to do battle today. In that post interview, you looked him right in his eyes. You told him he's the best golfer in the world. And he shrugged it off as if he well, wasn't content with that. Well, he made right? a joke about it, to be honest. He <laughs> says, he's, I'm, I'm about the 100th best golfer in the world. <laughs> you know, he, he's got a good sense of humor and, uh, you know, he's, he's playing some games and good on him. I love it. Uh, Dom, let's get into some of the highlights. Wako Neiman, what a day today. Take us through it. You were right there, Dom. Maybe we'll see you in the background somewhere. Yeah, this is a great tee shot on one. He missed the fair, but he, he kept missing it in the right spots. As I said on this golf course, yeah. you're going to miss a lot of fairways because of the way the, the, the fairways angle. But he missed it all in the right spots, and that led to an easy birdie. Two great shots on the par five fourth. That was close to being an yeah. eagle. He's, you know, it, it was just, he did everything correctly today. 
It, it really it really appears as though he's he's getting better and better yeah. with each day. On the seventh, the, the drivable path or close to drivable, we put it in the perfect spot. On ten, he was on the fairway, not the perfect spot, but his short game now is absolutely brilliant. And obviously he was a little bit concerned with this tee shot on sixteen, so of course yeah. he's gonna hit it right. And this on 17, I mean, that tee shot, I confirmed with his caddy, Gary Matthews, was that his aim point with the tee shot? And he said, it absolutely was. And he couldn't have given himself an easier shot. And there you go, stone dead for a birdie. Sheesh. And on 18, he only hit a 410 yard drive on 18. My goodness, and look at him, just shrugging it off like it's nothing. And the world loves Waco Neiman. Let's check into some social posts. Seems to be what everybody's tweeting about right now. And there he goes. Uh, Stepping up his crew. Look at this. Waco Neiman is very good at golf. I mean, that's an understatement at this yeah. point, right? Uh, He's the hottest golfer on the planet on the right planet. now. Oh, those are my words. Hottest <laughs> golfer alert. There we go. They just copy pasted what you said in the post okay. interview there. <laughs> and Joaquin Neiman is my master's pick. He's my master's pick, too. Gotta love these tweets. Keep them coming. We'll throw all of the social action on the show. So if you want to see your handle on here, let us know what you're thinking. All right, Waco Neiman recently received an invitation to participate in the Masters. The 25-year-old is one of golf's rising stars, to say the least. And he was excited to know he'll have a shot at the green jacket. Check this out. I actually never never thought I was going to be getting an invite. Do you want to play the majors? I mean, I, I'm just ready. I thought it was just needed to be inside the top 50 and just trying to do that, playing a little bit more. I mean, I want to win majors, but I get I get get in first. All right, well, you're gonna get in. Okay, you're gonna get in. I got the best call I could ever had. Coming from Agasta, they needed a verbal a verbal yes from me. Not saying that I confirmed that I want to accept the invitation. I'm like, yeah, I want to accept it. So. Masters invites last week as well for Waco. Congratulations to the Chilean on that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> doesn't get any better. All right, and here's another tag board post. I want to see Waco top it off with a win at the Masters. I would absolutely love to see that too. Gotta love that tweet. Keep the tweets coming here. We got the social going and we encourage it. I mean, I'm on social all day long. If you got something to say and you want to see yourself on TV, then tweet. Here's another one about Waco Neiman. Absolute dominance by my man Waco Neiman on Torque. Neiman is the best golfer in the world right now. There really is no dispute. Gotta love that and completely agree. Want to come right here on Club 54 post round show. And a beautiful view, Saudi Arabia here in Jeddah, right across from the beautiful Red Sea. And joining us, Sue Ann Hang, you've been super busy. And Jerry Fultz, I mean, we've been rocking out all day. You guys did a wonderful job. He's been drive. slacking. You <laughs> <laughs> Sue Ann, I, I first want to talk about your day. Uh, you have been everywhere today. I, I really you have. You have a few groups that you followed around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've seen every corner of this golf course. Don't worry about it. But, yeah, I started out with uh, John Rahm, obviously. I, I think he was one of the big names that we thought we were going to chase, Waco. Uh, he, and he got off to a really good start. He, uh, he was three under after his first six holes. And just that moment on the 10th, uh, that pitch, yeah. I think that just completely took the wind out of his sail. Yeah, the little simple pitch up the slope that just needs release over the hill, and he's got probably a tap-in birdie, and he ends up three-putting and walking away with bogey. And, and you said it at the time. You observed it, and you even listened to his self-talk walking off the green, how... Uh, how it upset him and he, and he didn't quite let it slide off as quickly as we might have expected from him normally. No, and you know, a player of his caliber, you would think that's a pretty straightforward shot, just straight up the hill, a lot of green to work with. He gave himself a perfect angle into that whole location. But what I noticed from that first putt, he still wasn't out of it at that point, by the way. Uh, and he was just so, he didn't have enough time to compose himself. And so when he got over that first putt, you can certainly tell the frustration and he just sort of you know when you get upset and you putt, you just go, bah, and then you just look up, and 
it was just a poor first putt, and he three-putted that one. And I think that just completely took the momentum out of his game today. What, what do you think needs to change going into Hong Kong for John Rahm? Is it really just a mental thing? Yeah, you know, he he's contended the last three events, and he just he's had, John Rahm. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, his winless streak is a whole three tournaments old. Nine rounds of golf right now. He's going to win. He's going to win often. Uh, the problem is, you know, we talk about the best players in the world coming together to play more often. We don't see that very often in golf. We see it at most of the majors now, maybe eventually all of them again. But what we have out here is a collection, a very dense collection of many of the greatest players in the game. And they have to play against each other every week. And they only get 13 chances a year to beat each other. Yeah, and I, I, yeah. And and I don't think they have that time to make a, a mistake like that, especially with 54 right. holes. You know, you don't play 72, right? So you have less time to make those mistakes. And I, anytime you make a mistake at a time like John did today, it just would cost you. Yeah, yeah it, it is it's much more of a sprint than a than a marathon, if you will, to, uh, to overuse another tired cl uh, cliche like I did in the pregame with yeah. you, Christian. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's, okay. it's it's it is. This is world class competitive. Uh, Top level golf at, the, at its finest. It's a different format than maybe traditional golf people are used to. Yeah. 54 holes being a big part of it, and and the fairness of a shotgun start also being another big part of now, it. After John, you went to Louis Oosthuizen. How was that? I mean, he he did such a great job. Man, he was, you know, he had so much momentum uh, all the way till the 13th hole. He was, he um, he got to to. 13th hole, I believe it was, when I joined him, and he just had an 8-iron there and just hit a really terrible iron shot, the worst I've seen him. I watched him yesterday as well, swinging the club beautifully, and I think that was the moment for Louis that kind of took the wind out of his sails at yeah. that point, you know, and it just, like, that's what I'm saying. It really exposes you out here with kind of the, the field that we have, you yeah. can't afford to make those mistakes at that point in the competition. And much like Waco, and I'll make this brief, much like Waco the last couple of months playing playing the best golf of his life, Louis playing similar golf to when he played the best of his life the last few months as well, winning twice uh, in non-live events in the off season. And then, and then second in Oman exactly. last week, yeah. One of the biggest stories coming into this week was Anthony Kim and his debut. You got to speak with him after his final round. I want you to talk about that for a little bit. Well, first of all, I was nervous as hell. <laughs> You're nervous. <laughs> I must have read through my questions like three times. But, you know, it was such an honor to, first of all, talk to him. I remember when I was a kid, I watched him play at his peak. And, and just to be able to be in his presence was such a privilege. Uh, you know, you can certainly tell the gratitude, I think, from his response and how grateful he is to be back out here doing what he loves. I got to talk to his wife, Emily, uh, right before I went to go talk to him and she was just saying he's doing great you know he's so happy he's he's really enjoying being out here and it really shows it shows in his expression in that that interview and and look he's got a lot of work left ahead he knows that but he's ready for it but he showed signs of life as well and, yeah. and i would like to say we watched anthony kim grow up right before our eyes we didn't he was gone for 12 12 years but the next time we saw him he is a different person a mature person and i think he proved enough to himself this week to justify the fact that he is now a professional golfer again i want to talk a little bit now about the team competition we started today with stinger gc up by six Seven, and then crushers coming through at the end of the day as champions. I mean, that that's crazy, right? They were uh, 11 back. <laughs> uh, you know what? Let's actually get into their highlights and check out this unbelievable <laughs> comeback story from Crushers GC. Let's take a look. Well, we're gonna kick it off with their captain Bryson DeChambeau. This is his second shot on the eighth. Hold out. Hello. <laughs> And he then, struggled yesterday, by the way. The latest victim of our couch in the <laughs> Fairway to Heaven what podcast you call him starring a Sue Ann, Sue Ann Hank. <laughs> <laughs> That's Honor Bond here. He's second at number seven. And they are just rolling 20 under par as a team in these conditions. you got to be kidding me. And then Charles with his birdie on the 13th. Yep. He's such a solid putter, isn't he? Yeah, he's a solid, great ball striker as well. Bryson at 18 for Eagle. Whoop, there it is. Fuck it. Whoop, there it is. Really? You went there? <laughs> great to, song. I had to throw that in there, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, at least you didn't say, boom goes the dynamite. <laughs> I'm saying Different that Different era. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but what, what a fantastic uh, final round for Crushes. 20 under collectively 
for that team. That is some serious golf, Jerry. There was a 62 today, Bryson DeChambeau. There were two 64s today, one of them on their team, Charles Howell. And then the next best score was 65. Three of the four best scores in the tournament today were by three crushers. The visual of today looks absolutely crazy. Here's a score worm. If you look at Crusher's GC, look how they skyrocketed today. Yeah, it looks like a seismograph <laughs> if you follow their line. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, let's go over to some social posts here from some of our fans. I've been encouraging it, and you guys have been posting it. Going crushers crazy. Take a look at these here. Keep them coming, fans. This is Club 54 Post Round Show. All right, fans, the Live Golf Plus app is filled with great content, including an incredible and informative series of lessons from the best players in the world. Take a look. Hey guys, this is Cam Smith. Hi, I'm Bryson DeChambeau. I'm Bubba Watson. And welcome, welcome, welcome to my live lesson. So if you're like me and you miss fairways, this is when the creativity comes out. Focus on that target. That's what I'm focused on. Pay the man. For me, I just want to make it simple as possible. Tempo for sure is one thing you need to keep an eye on. Cam Smith, he has taken Complete control here. I like to aim the putter, make sure that's perfect. Then I take my stance, give it one good look at the hole, and hit a good putt. Houdini with the flat stick. Here you go, ball. Here we go. Bryson DeChambeau electrifies the crowd. So guys, there's a lot of mysteries around hitting it really far. So that's what psycho mode comes in. Try to get a little psycho with it. Yeah, there it is. That was pepper. Let your body free up. Let things just move more. Don't feel like you're restricted. You can do that. You're on your way to better golf. You guys mentioned that Fairway to Heaven pod. If you guys had to choose any favorites so far from this season, it can be a quick answer. They're, oh. they're looking at each other. <laughs> For oh, the, you guys can't see them. They're looking is, at each other. This is no, tough. it's not fair. They're all, <laughs> no, they're all, that's my, all favorite. my favorite. That's yeah. my favorite. You guys, did you just had to pick one? They're no? all my favorite. Uh, okay. My favorite is my co host. My favorite's Very Jerry. diplomatic. Very diplomatic answer, you two. All right, we couldn't have a post round show without the one and only Rachel Drummond. Let's check in with Rachel. What's going on? Hey team, I am out on the golf course, I'm on the sixth hole. What a champion, I can't believe Neiman, he can't do anything wrong, five birdies in this. And we're gonna talk about a particular shot he had today on the sixth hole. He had 185 yards, it's at least a two club wind as you can see by me blowing this way. And I've, I've got to hit it again, but first off we're gonna see this shot and we're gonna talk about what he did great. So. Here we go, he's just between the bunkers. He's hitting off a launch pad, which is gonna make it go higher, into the wind. Pin is back left. And at about 21 yards onto the green, you've actually got a down slope to that pin, and there's only 21 feet after that pin. It is such a good shot. And his caddy says it's good. Okay, so we're gonna talk about this, and I'm actually gonna talk you through how you can navigate this sort of situation, and I'm gonna give you a few tips. So come with me. Okay, so we have 185 yards. As I said, it was at least a two club win today, so it's playing about 210. I actually just me messaged Ricky Ellett Brooks's caddy to be like, is it definitely two clubs? And I think it is. So I've, he hit a five iron. I think I've got a five wood here. So number one, people at home always think about the environment that you have in front of you. So as I said, we can see the ball is sitting slightly up, which is gonna add loft and create more spin, which isn't ideal when you're playing into wind. So always look at what you're faced with before you pick the club. Obviously lots of wind, you're gonna to have to go up two clubs. Okay, now we saw with the green, there's a lot of room right of the pin. So what I'm gonna do setup wise is gonna help me navigate a right start line and hopefully bring the ball back to a pin with a draw. It's simple, isn't it? Okay, right, let's go. So 185, I've got my rescue. Now, first up, I spoke about starting the ball out to the right to allow for the wind. So, tip for everyone at home. 
If you move the ball back in your stance slightly, what that's going to do is help get your path out to the right. Now, Jason Coatcrack, I'm dropping players, he also taught me that when you move the back ball back, you need to make sure you close the face slightly because as it moves back, it starts going right. So we're going ball back, face slightly closed. Now, as we saw in Neiman's swing, he's almost got that sawn off follow through, which is also going to help keep that ball flight slightly lower. Shall I have a go? <laughs> my crew's looking at me like, yeah. Okay, so we're going to go through the environment again. I'm standing behind, picking my start line. I'm going to get the club face down first. Really zoning into where I want the ball to start. Ball position slightly back, club face slightly closed. I mean, if it holds, I've struck it good. I think it could be a little bit left. I'll take that. It's in the bunker. I can hear. Someone's telling me it's in the bunker. I'm going to do one more, okay? We're going to go through this one more time. So again, always remember people at home that your environment's going to dictate the shot that you need to play. So we've got that launch pad, so it's going to add loft. So we need more club. The wind's going to need more club. We've got a left pin. We don't want to go left like I just did. So we're going to get the ball back. So same again, you're going to pick the right side of that green. If I can strike it like that again, I'll be happy. Feet good, ball back. another little look at his swing face on I'm going to tell you a few things now that he does technically which I want you to try at home so face on very stable stays very centered people at home put your head against a wall and give that swing a go on the back swing club shallowing nicely and see through impact how stable his left side is and slightly sawn off finish it's just poetry in motion I've given you so many tips there but remember, the environment's going to dictate the shot you need to play. Take that all in. Trust the start line. And Neiman, you are just so good. Can you come play, hit the shot for me, please? <laughs> Back to you, Christian. <laughs> Rachel, great job out there. You do such a great job. She's so brave. She I mean, is. she could have gone out there and found a shot to, to teach from and to re replay from earlier today, a downwind wedge or nine iron. She goes for an up up to a lie into the wind fairway wood and one of the hardest holes yeah. straight into the breeze putting our money yeah. where our mouth is gotta love that <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> all right so as we're looking ahead to next week in hong kong as we look back at day three what do you think you're going to remember most from today i'm going to go first it's got to be ak yeah um having ak back playing after 12 years uh, a guy that i looked up to for so much of my life and and even in my professional career uh just to to have him out here to watch him and to to See him hit balls again is is amazing. What about you, Jer? I have. I, 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 That's the first thing that came to my mind. You, you said it was one of the biggest stories coming into the week. Uh, it, to me, it's arguably the biggest story in golf for the year thus far until we get to major season. Anthony Kim returning to professional golf out of Nowheresville is. It, it polarizes the entire golf community out of with curiosity and just wanting to see him again and then being able to uh, be fortunate enough to watch him play golf again. Yeah. You know, we, we tr we're treating it like, a, like he's a deity of some sort. He's not. He's a three-time winner on the PGA Tour, but he's a charismatic, fun guy to watch play, and, and now we get to see it again and watch him climb his way out of that abyss to hopefully uh, old form. It was a good time here in Jeddah, and our next stop is Hong Kong. Take a look at this one. Best. This is the best day ever! Unbelievable. Get ready, Hong Kong. Oh, yeah! Are you ready for this? Oh. He was simply masterful today. See you at Live Golf Hong Kong. We'll see you guys in Hong Kong. That's a wrap. Day three is over. The best of the best made it happen. They gave us a show. Wako Neiman, two out of three. We'll see you guys in Hong Kong. I, you guys are going to be there, right? Yeah, we got some go, plans. Let's off. go get some noodles <laughs> and dumplings. <laughs> Jerry, you got some plans outside of the uh, the sport uh, in Hong Kong? To, to be made soon, yes. To be, I'm looking forward to doing this all again with you in Hong Kong. Dom Boulay's hometown. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys for watching us. This was Club 54 Post Round Show. We'll see you in Hong Kong. Peace.